we're back. I know we have been gone for a month now. It is the living room and who spiked the tea here on Art Imitates Life. It's time to get with it. Let's go. I'm a filmmaker. I've worked in film, video, and television for over 30 years. I took a little break, but now I'm back. to another edition of Art Imitates Life with me, Tanya Dixon. You know, y'all, I want to say Happy New Year. It seems so old now. I mean, we are on January 28th and it's been in the whole doggone month of new yearing everywhere. But it's our first, our first live show back in. I had a show last night, but this is a live one here with you all for well, who spiked the tea and also the living room. So happy to be back. And I hope that you all had a, a very safe and happy and prosperous and all that, you know, a holiday season. This is feels so funny. It's just so late. But we are back and I'm happy to be back. And I'm happy to have the living room team here tonight. And we've got the topic for you, old minds versus new minds. Now, I got a lot to say on that, but you know, this was Michael's topic, so I'm gonna let him, you know, describe how how this all came about, and we'll get it kicked off. And then, of course, there's a lot coming on the teeth first because we've been gone for so long. Until there's so many stories that I had to just keep letting go by, let it go by. But now we get to discuss some things. So you know how we do. You're gonna get a word right now from our sponsor. We'll be back to kick it off with the living room team in just a few moments. Art imitates life with Tanya Dixon is being. Sponsored by Tandyland Global, bringing your multimedia dreams to life. Welcome back. Well, it's time now. Let me get my folks in here. Can y'all go ahead and unmute yourselves and let me go ahead and bring you all in. It's time to get a crack in. How y'all doing? All <laughs> right. I'm all right. Right. Hey. <laughs> well, yeah, it feels like we've been gone forever. I mean, the last show was December 17th. Forever. forever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, gosh, it has been like a little minute, you know, so I'm, I'm really happy to be back and we get to chat it up and talk it up tonight, all that, all that. Now, everybody everybody here, first of all, we have, no, I can't say Bridget was totally new face because we saw Bridget on December 17th on here, but Bridget has joined us again, and also Mr. Shelton Bernard is here. So I'm gonna uh, have everybody like we like we do, is everybody goes around and kind of like talks about how was your week how, now, <laughs> how was your month? It can't even be your week. How was your month? <laughs> and oh, so nice. I'm gonna do that in just a, a second. And if y'all ready, y'all ready to get this cracking? Yeah. Okay, y'all so slow to talk. So I'm, I, just like, I, okay. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Right. I mean, the way you said it, I thought you, the way you said it, I thought you were going to another commercial. Hell, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's all about y'all right now. It's all about y'all. So. <laughs> I mean, so let's look at it like this from my screen. I see uh, Miss Bridget first. So how about that? Right. Yeah, I'm going to start with Bridget and just tell us how was your month, your holiday, your whole night? How was it? How was everything for you? Let's just say a little, a little too much drama. For me. Okay. <laughs> I understand. Just a little I too understand. much drama. But since the drama normally comes with, you know, being in a house with some kids. And, and no adult time. So 
So I miss never a dull time. moment. <laughs> never a dull moment. I'm sure. Definitely. Um, yeah, closing out the year. Um, trying to finish some things. Trying to start some new things. Um, mm. I'm working on a book, a poetry book. So that's what I ended my year working oh, on. And right, started right. my year trying to finish it before the first quarter. So right. I love that. I'm, I'm doing some things, doing some things, trying to anyway. All right, keep it moving. I know that's right. It's like that's why we just it's not that you're trying, you you're just doing. And it's an everyday right. struggle, you know, to, to climb up that hill. Yeah. So just keep it rocking. <laughs> All right, nice having you here, Bridget. Margot, go, go, nice go, go, go. Here. Yes. <laughs> Margot, go, 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 go. What you doing? What you been doing? Hey, y'all. I have had a decent week or a decent month, so somewhat. I hated getting sick, but that gave me added time to just like sit, be still. Almost mm -hmm. felt like God say, be still. Just enjoy this time, recoup, right. renew, do all of that. Um, and oh, in no. the midst of it, I picked up writing again. I did a, a workshop last Saturday, uh, a free write with um, uh, like a professor or somebody that works from UT. So I'm starting to pick up that and do that every month to get back into it. And um, on top of that, just new ideas, new thoughts, new dreams, new goals, new everything to try to start really pursuing and making small steps at a time. Um, and really got to spend just some extra added time with my boys too. So they kept me rolling. They kept me going, even though I had to like be all covered up and try to be away from them, but they kept the humor going though. Okay. That's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I mean, it's like the family thing. It's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And especially during times when you're sick and other things are going. So that's great. Mike. Turn it loose. What happened? Turn it loose. What's, going on? What's going on, man? Y'all know how it goes, man. Uh, life, life is a mother doodly, right? We, we still, you know, we still in the beginning. So yeah, my life is a mother doodly. Um, so, <laughs> but nah, like I mean, if you're trying to look at since the last time we was on, man. You know, you had the the whole holiday thing, and um, you know, uh. I'm 41 years old, but I'm I'm still a mama's baby. So you know what I'm saying? My mama came to come visit me. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And uh yeah, so when she That's came nice. in, you know, we got to spend a little little time. She came for my graduation for my for my degree, but they canceled it the um global happenings. You know what I'm saying? So uh, so you know, I was excited, uh then got let down, but you know, mama made everything all right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then, um, yeah, yeah, mama made everything all right. And then, you know, just, um, you know, working on different, you know, little projects, music, you know what I'm saying? Trying to figure out how to make beats and doing all this stuff on the phone, on the app on my phone, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> You're making it work. <laughs> trying to make it work, but, you know, staying busy, staying occupied, you know, um, trying to create self-therapy as I, uh, you know, continue on with this uh, transition of becoming a civilian again. It, what the hell is that? Like, <laughs> it's, it's a tough transition. What you say? I said, it's a tough transition. Yeah, it is. It is. So, but other than that, man, then, you know, um, over the t over the duration, making sure my kinfolk are right. Shelton is my kinfolk. You know what I'm saying? That's my little cousin. Right. So, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but no. Nah. Yeah. So I say that to kind of do a segue uh, because you know kinfolk doing some 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 big things. Where you know, and I let him speak on it. But I'm, that's that's enough about me. All right. Thank you. Turn them loose. All right, Mr. Shelton. Come on and tell uh, us. Good what evening. You good evening to, to everyone. Um, as as you all know, and as Mike has said previously, I am his cousin, but uh, he's he's a uh, always been a, a great person for me to follow. I've been following him all my life, so um, I'm out here uh, in my location. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm trying to keep that discreet at the moment, you know. Uh, but I'm out here in my location. Uh, I'm loving it where I am. Uh, okay. I made 
great progress, you know, and it's uh it's crazy how I got to this point, you know, it's like I had to go through a lot of turmoil and um hurt actually, you know, I'm still in the healing process, but so many doors have opened as I close some doors on some friendships and some relationships. Uh and you know, my faith has been challenged a lot. So um mm-hmm. but I'm spiritually enlightened now. Uh, I'm closer than I ever been to God right now at this point in my life. And I'm my strongest. So I'm working on a newspaper now. Okay. <laughs> and hey, cool. the new year has been good to me. You know, okay. I won't complain. So P3, right. we're going to keep it going. Positivity, productivity, because we are already pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's cute. I like that. Well, y'all, I feel like I am in a <clears> bit <throat> of a blur. Like even sitting here looking at everyone now, it's just like it's hard to believe that we're back because it has been so many things that have occurred since December 17th and everything has not been good. Um, I really meant to bring a, I mean, have a picture for you all tonight, but um, <clears throat> of course the team knows we did two special shows of, uh, was it the 20 questions for the lovers? And we had the guest on with us, Cookie Jones and LaMarcus Lawrence. And LaMarcus and I have known each other for 24 years and three days before Christmas, he didn't wake up. And I still have a hard time saying those words and it was a really, really, really rough holiday just knowing that he is gone. Breathe. Oh, God. Uh, but I think the thing that helped me to kind of get through it, which is crazy, is I got sick. I got, like, super sick. And I don't usually get, like, I might get, like, a cold. I get, get a flu every now and then. But I got, like, one of those real rough flus, the ones that it took away all my appetite. It took away everything. And I, it was just a, a rough time. So it, it gave me a chance to think a lot during that time. And of course, I thought about my friend. We had a lot of plans for starting here in January and how to restart again without him and all the things that we had you know, decided we were going to do. But, you know, God is good. And uh, uh, we'll get there. We'll yeah, get there. Yeah. You know, and I was so sick I didn't get a chance to go to his funeral. <clears throat> so hopefully I can go to. I mean, I still on the day of his funeral, which was weeks after I was still had a hundred two temperature and then I was just out. So I, it was the worst thing. It was a very cold, cold day here, and I just couldn't do an outside ceremony. So <clears throat> I'm still putting all of that away. You know, it's it's going to take me a little bit of time, but it's uh, we'll put it all away. But the the good side of everything is that I'm I'm happy to still be here. I'm happy to have this new year. I'm happy to you know that we're starting back with this show again. And I love talking about topics, life topics out there, you know, for the uh, the world and to the world, and and having this platform. And I'm really glad that we we started again and to have you all here. And it's, this is us all a blessing to me. So I'm gonna stop talking about it because you know when you when you when you hold it back emotions, your throat starts to hurt. And so we're gonna move off me now and go on. There's a lot of good stuff coming too, but we'll get all to that later. I've been sitting here looking at my other computer because I'm trying to get my other computer that and everybody who was listening to me earlier know that I've been having some computer challenges, but you know, we're getting over it, but it's time for Who Spiked the Tea. And of course, next week, we're going to have the opening for Who Spiked the Tea. But, you know, Michael did such a, a nice job with the, the song. It's, it's long and it's, it's like it's like editing a music video. So that's why it's taking me a little longer. I'm like, damn, it's like a music video. <laughs> so that's what it feels like. But we, we're going to get it done. <laughs> we're going to get it done. And I thank Michael for doing what he's done. And I thank you so much. But here's the first story for the night on Who Spiked the Tea. Now, I know there was a lot of people who watched the show, the HBO show Insecure. And you might be familiar with the actor who played, uh, his name is Jay Ellis, and he played uh, Martin Lawrence. Um, what was his full name? Martin Lawrence. 
something. I just saw it just now. Martin Lawrence Walker. That was his name on the show. I never knew it was Martin Lawrence Walker, but um, yeah, you know I, I mean? never knew Martin was at the beginning either. <laughs> but just Lawrence <laughs> Walker, yeah. Yes. And what he says is that a woman slapped him at the airport because she got mad at Lawrence. Now, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're an yeah. actor. And yeah. this happens yeah. to people sometimes when someone sees yeah. them and they go get in their emotions about it. But what he says is uh, earlier in the week, he, the 40 year old actor tweeted about a fan encounter that had gone wrong that he experienced at the airport. Uh, he, he was tweeting and he said, good morning to everyone except the lady that slapped me in the face at the airport because she got mad at Lawrence for something that he did in season three. Okay, not right. even the latest season. <laughs> Yeah, because they was on season five, but she slapped wow. him for something for season three. Yeah. <laughs> you know she <laughs> she, she yeah. completely wrote for that. <laughs> okay, yeah. but he yeah. said in response to his tweet, he had an a array of emotions with people who were talking about the uh, the series and then also the unknown woman's motives. And he was like, well, damn, look at you getting your flowers for being a good actor. You know, that's one, one, one fan had joked about that. You know, so people have different emotions. But have you ever, ever heard of that before? People getting completely inside in their emotions when they see somebody like they see a sports fan who lost the game. Uh oh. Shelton, you just raised your hand. What did what did you do? Yeah, he had his hand up. No, man, I just I'm I'm I was so um into power, you know, 50 Cent season a mm. uh, show power. And Tyreek mm -hmm. on the first seasons, you know, Tyreek was doing so much BS, he had me in my feelings. And I was like, if I ever see Tyreek in public, you know, I'm putting pause on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, he, he played that role well. So yeah. I'm right. like, when actors can, when actors can do a role that well, then you, you know that they're uh, you're getting your money's worth because right. uh, how Richard T. Jones yeah. treated Jill Scott and why did I get married too? I still don't like. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm yes. So, yes. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. Say, I bet I see you in real life. Hey, it, it took it took me it took me a long time. It took me a long time to get over Danny Lover from Color Purple. Oh you know yeah. Mister. Yes. Yes. Mister. Like straight up. Like, like I hated that man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And right. like <laughs> in a moment where I had the chance to meet him instead of, you know. I guess being material about the matter, I was like, you know, I was like, F him, like to hell with him. I don't give a damn. <laughs> and like, like, like Tim said, man, like when an actor can make you forget all, you know, reality or realism, and you still stuck, you see, a, you know, the person is an actor, you know, they was right. playing a role, but you hate them for real, like to your heart, to your heart. You know what I'm saying? You know, then you, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's real. Yeah. 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 That is. So you believe know? it or not, I'm like that. Don't don't laugh. <laughs> I'm I'm like that about almost every every character that's in Slytherin House for Harry Potter. Every character, I hate them. Like if I meet him in real life, <laughs> we're not gonna be friends. I'm, we're not gonna be friends. It's stupid. I know it's stupid. <laughs> You know, um, I don't know how I don't know how Hollywood works, but it's another character um, who, for the longest, I, I I despise him. And when I see him, I still despise him. But I know the story. I know his story. Uh -huh. So now that I'm a little bit older, and I know y'all like, well, get to the act, monkey dude. We got about thirty yeah. more seconds, and I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> unleash this. Unleash this. Uh, what I've been, you know, what I'm trying to say. Twenty seconds. <laughs> So the, the character that I'm talking about, um, I believe his name is Joaquin Phoenix, right? The guy who played oh, the enemy, yeah. who played mm -hmm. the enemy in 300, right? Right. I yeah. believe that, right? So, um, mm -hmm. and I think he played another um, uh, role that I didn't like. I think it was Troy. I think he was. I don't know if it was him. Was he in Troy too? Yes, he was. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So, but he played his role. No, it was Gladiator. 
Gladiator. Was it Gladiator? It, it was something, but he played a role so damn good, and he's always playing those types of roles. And he like like the bad guy or the the fuck guy. We passed twenty minutes now. The fuck guy. Yeah. So um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like I really fucking I really fucking despise this guy. But if you ever y'all ever look at his his story of what happened with him as a as a kid, um, and they even got now the video of the nine one one tape or the 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 the, the audio of the nine one one tape of him trying to save his his brother's life, um, you. As an artist, I now realize that he's taking his hurt, his pain, and his suffering and poured it into his craft. And that's what kind of makes some of these people so good. So if you see an actor that makes you feel that way, they probably they probably got a story, a life story that 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 you know creates that that power in them to be able to play those roles so well. Well, I tell you so this, if I like, see a rich guy, if you paint a rich guy and being a an asshole. That's basically his persona, and I should still hate him. So yeah, all the all the all the Cleveland Hill, Harry Potter, I hate him. Hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you know what? I was feeling the same way, um, and I it was a very it's a very similar thing to what um, Michael was saying about Danny Glover. Um, and I, I interviewed Daddy years ago, but I don't. I do not remember at this moment if it was before or after the color purple. I don't remember. All I know is that I, I was at UT. We did a, a guest spot. It wasn't a planned interview, and the whole damn room got quiet. So I had no chance to feel emotions mm-hmm. because I never expected that whole room to get quiet and look at my interview. So I was very embarrassed about that. But we did. We did what we came to do. But John Voight. Ah, yeah. John Boyd plays a lot of those roles too. Mm-hmm. And I had mm-hmm. just seen Rosewood. And if you saw Rosewood, you know what happened at the yeah. beginning of the movie? Yeah. You know, his whole thing. So I was in LA. I was at the Vibe Show. One of my friends used to work for the Vibe Show, and, and she had introduced me to Quincy Jones and his uh, right hand man, Keith Killing Skills. So they were like, they let me come walk around all the time in the back. So, John, I see him. And I'm looking in my head, you know, I'm looking like, yeah, there he is. But he just comes right up and he shakes my hand. And he's shaking everybody's hand. He was just so nice. He was a totally different persona than I ever thought. And the, uh, what's their names? Uh, the Smollett's, all the Smollett's were there. They were young at the time. And so it was all of them, you know, because there's a gang of them. So all right. the Smollett's were there with their mom. And so Jesse and what's the other girl name who's the actress, they were all there. And he just, we were all just standing and he just comes up and he just, and he, he had a, so, a different persona. And I remember at that time I said, you got to put that away because these people are playing a role. And I remember at that moment uh, walking away from that and saying, don't judge the book. Bye. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I you think I think me, what, I was gonna say. You know what made me give him a pass? What's John that? Boyd. What? I, what? My understanding, Angelina Jolie is his daughter. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the only oh, thing yeah. that gave him a pass. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, can't yeah. be mad. Can't be mad at the man that created Angelina Jolie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I think the thing is <laughs> the, when we, the way the, we get um, emotionally charged. Be behind mm-hmm. these uh, good actors and, and how they are on screen is because we actually know somebody like the character that they're playing. Or yeah. we know that, hey, it's a possibility yeah. that there's a person out there that's just like this. You right. know what I mean? Right. So it's, or they moved us to uh, some point, of too. Of it. Right. right. Or, or mm-hmm. we encountered somebody like that, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And they but have, like, they have uh, moved us to if, a point. If any of you watch the uh, Game of Thrones, but I binge watched it, and Joffrey. Uh-huh. I can't stand Joffrey. Like I don't know if y'all y'all know the character Joffrey is. He is a he's the worst of the worst. You know he's like right. right. Yeah, he he definitely brings some some stuff up in you. <laughs> I know that's right. Well, you know what? I just think it just goes to show now that. We can't get into our emotions like we really want to when we see these people. We got to hold it together and just know right. that they're 
they're only at their job, just like we do our own thing too. So <laughs> like it's well. right. They doing the, you know, that. That's the lady that walked around and did it to a famous person. Now, just think of how many people you encounter that you right. work with that you slap the hell out of. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right, <laughs> but some people are deserving. I bet you. I bet you. I bet you. Every one of y'all and whoever's watching got somebody that they didn't hate worked with, worked for, or whatever past, present, or future that they mm -hmm. right now want to slap the shit out of. Them. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm trying. And it's taking a and it's taking a lot to really hold that back because you see that person almost every day. Possibly. I don't want to charge. I don't want to charge. That is true. Well, speaking of charges and lawsuits and all that, of course we all have heard about the um, lawsuit that Cardi B filed against the blogger Tasha K. Um, mm -hmm. you, yes, and you know that Tasha K lost that lawsuit. So y'all got to fill me in. Y'all got to fill me in on this, and I'm a little blind to this. I think it's so okay. Me. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is. They say more than four million now, but they uh, apparently. I'm looking at a give a credit to the source. I'm looking at a. a, a in an article here where Tasha Kay has responded after losing the defamation lawsuit that she owes for more than $4 million to Cardi B. Now, they're going to talk a little bit here. Michael, I'll give you a little bit of the backstory. Um, the YouTube blogger Tasha Kay is speaking out after losing in court to Cardi B. On Wednesday, Tasha posted a video on her YouTube channel where she called the ruling extremely prejudicial and blasted the machine for bullying her. Now, Tasha, whose real name is Latasha Kebby, did not explain who or what the machine is. We know what the machine is uh, that she is referring to. However, she claimed that the, this machine threatened her life as well. Uh, these last four years, fighting this conspiracy case has been extremely challenging. The verdict handed down on Monday was no shock to myself, my husband, or my legal team. This is what Tasha says. Uh, we called bluff against the machine that wanted to bully me for not wavering from my personal beliefs. A machine that has corporate interests to protect prostitution, drug use, promiscuity, and to glorify the violence that wreaks havoc in our society and in our neighborhoods. Uh, towards the end of the video, uh, Kebby said that she will continue to fight for the truth and take you take it to the Supreme Court if she needs to. I get with you in a minute, uh, sir. My dog is unhappy because he's 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 getting his covers together right now. I'll be with you in a minute, sir. And she's continuing to you know say that she will fight this whole thing. But what according to the court documents, the, the YouTuber Tasha K claimed that the Bronx native. Cardi B has herpes, used a bottle, a beer bottle as a sex toy when she was a stripper and worked as a prostitute and abused cocaine. Uh, okay. During her testimony, yeah, during the testimony, Cardi B, whose real name is Bel Calles Malinas Almanza, I'm going to try my best to, to make that work, says that yeah. she felt <laughs> suicidal at times. You know, she poured that on thick. She felt suicidal at times following the alleged claims made by Tasha. Now, the gossip blogger was ordered to pay Cardi B $1.25 million in punitive damages, also an additional $500,000 in reimbursement of WAP MC's legal fees that added up to a whopping one million three hundred thirty-eight thousand seven hundred fifty-three and forty-seven cents. And, say, and, uh, and <laughs> what was that now? Did you say a whopping? Yes, a whopping. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. It is in that in that one hundred twenty-five million. Okay, somebody's breaking up a little bit. I'm looking over here. Okay, now what was that again? Uh oh, Bridget's coming back. In. I didn't know if that was pun was intended. Oh, you know what? It was, I think it was pun intended because they had just mentioned WAP. Like the song. Oh, okay. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. 
he did it from the back again. So I think it was intended. But uh, this whole thing here, uh, it, they say everything kind of totals up to more than four million. So, them some expensive words. This high them are some expensive words. Yeah. That's how Absolutely. Well, that's that's that whole hot ass. Tasha K. Field justified with with what she shared of of Cardi's life is what I'm asking. Does she does she really feel like she wanted or needed to put that out there? Because it's What's that's it some expensive words. Well, well, number one, when yeah. you start talking about well, number one, that's a HIPAA violation. So I don't know. Uh, you know, and I'm pretty sure that's probably what aided in the decision to 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 rule in favor of, of Miss Cardi B because that's a HIPAA violation. If 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 that type of stuff is true, like you sitting there saying that somebody got this, if it's true, then that's a HIPAA violation. How the hell did you find out? And then, yeah. Um, and then number two, if it's not true, then that's defamation of character. You know what I'm saying? Right. Young has, that young lady has built a brand. Has done, you know, so many things. You know, I, I, she, with what she does, she has done her her part as far as trying to give back and support, you know, give back to the community, support certain, um, you know, movements or whatever the case may be. So you're mm -hmm. you're in a brand, and her brand is her life or the, her means of making money. So when you tarnish a brand and the brand suffers, you not only are uh, getting dinged for a personal attack. But now you're affecting that person's uh, means of income. Mm -hmm. So anything that's lost, you got you to gotta compensate for that. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I get it. But at yeah. the same time, if the only reason this became an issue is because your feelings is hurt, how many feelings you done hurt, you know, go beef battles. And then because someone has a view and it's like, oh. You want the, mug, the mugs that that's been out here talking that stuff that we don't want to hear. We don't we don't want no productivity in life. We 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 trying to destroy some shit. And you sitting there trying to get people to get 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 toxic emotion and and kick back. What the hell are you doing, right? <laughs> but and, right. You know, I think and the machine, as they call it, you know, pushes back. Go ahead, Kimbo. If if the rumors are true about Cardi, I don't think that would stop people from buying her albums. Or I don't think they would stop her from booking shows because mm -hmm. of that. Because statistically, it says one out of four have it. <laughs> you know. You, you know what? I mean, <laughs> no, I, I get his take. I get his take on it. He's doing the, the, the behind the scenes research, the the medical. <laughs> hey, just, yeah. So how? No, you know, I get I get where you're coming from. I mean, how honestly, if you look at it that way, yeah. Though? Like, if it's true, <laughs> how would that be defamation? <laughs> it's not. It's if it's, true, it's not. Yeah. But it's a, right. it's a matter of putting somebody's it's medical, music yeah, out there. Her, her, her medical, her, her medical right. information. Right. That, yeah. you know, that's, that's confidential. But the thing about it and, is, and you know, it, how did yeah. she find well, out? It, if, if that, that, Cardi told yeah. somebody else, if, if Cardi but I, I could mention, they, they I told her it's no longer no HIPAA, it's no longer what? no um, protected because you open up your mouth and you talk right. to somebody other than your medical uh, doctor or right. you know your counsel. So, is it Cardi's fault that her business got put out there? Okay, who, who you would know, Tell somebody that they infected a beer bottle and passed it on to somebody. I thought you wouldn't tell nobody that. You don't tell nobody that. You don't be like, I purposely did this. <laughs> but you, I no? don't know if you all remember this. Do you all remember there was plenty of people at one time that came forward? This was when Tasha first started. Because I, I used to watch Tasha's sh uh, show a lot. And um, because I was very curious. I was just so curious. Um how she did everything at those numbers because she got mad numbers, right? So I, I, I wanted to see how you know she did her thing. And she keeps you entertained, that's one thing for sure. But there were various people who came in and gave firsthand stories 
about the life of Cardi B. So there's a lot of people out there to support some of those claims, but the exact thing like the herpes or anything like that, I don't know about that part. But there were some people who did come and tell some real hardcore stories about what was going on. And I do remember that. Now, why? Those people didn't be a part of the, the lawsuit. I'm pretty sure they wanted to keep themselves away from that. But there was different folks back that when I used to watch the show that I would hear the different yeah. things that they would say. And it made some of the things. Huh? Machine is a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> and the machine, we all know who the machine is. We know what they do. And we know we know they did uh did the threats against um Tasha K. We know they did all that because that's what they do. However, that's kind of a a fake machine now because that machine is slowly being dismantled from the top hey. down. Whatever the hell going on. <laughs> them wrestlers be saying, Do they want to go to war with the machine? No. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that's, why I say, that's why I say I couldn't be no politician. I couldn't. I couldn't be a politician. Not the way that they play. Hell, no. I can be a politician anyway because of some of the other stuff that you know. You, you know me, and you know the, the things that they do. All your business be out there, goddamn. <laughs> So, well, to me, what? it makes me think that there's going to be a lot more lawsuits on 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 issues like that because there's too many people out there talking and sharing information that either shouldn't be disclosed. Even with, um, I don't know if anybody saw uh, Kia that that's been talking hard on um, Trina. Um, she's uh -uh. been saying a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? So, yeah. I don't, my neck, no. my back. She's yeah, my neck, my yeah. back. Yeah, that's Kaya. Yeah. Oh, Kaya. <laughs> my bad. My bad. But she's been talking a lot on Trina, and I was like, wow, I didn't know this is what we're doing now. Like, you yeah, know, I, is I this how we understand why. Is there a reason yeah, why? Like, oh, they've been they're just they trying been, to stay relevant. They trying I mean, to stay they, relevant. Yeah, right. but they've been, have, they've been there since, what, 98, 99? You know what I'm saying? Trying to stay relevant. You know, Controversy sells. Sex yeah, sales. it does. But you, you does. can only be sexy for so long. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then if you don't, yeah. have, if you don't have the money to pay for the, the, the plastic surgery, you have to use other means of staying relevant. So that's why you have people doing outlandish things. Uh, the Boondocks did a, a great episode about it. A lot of rappers <laughs> stage things and go to jail, like the Jesse Smollett. I, don't, I mean, he was relevant in Empire, but I guess since power was taking over, Jesse felt the reason to be relevant and to be in the headlines. I'm finna stay something dramatic. People do this type of stuff all the time. That's yeah. Like, I, yeah. I, I never yeah. wasn't Cardi B on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta or one of these shows yeah. before. I uh, love hip hop New York. Yeah, yeah. Before mm -hmm. she, yeah, before it she looked like she was getting ran yeah. through then. Nope. And I'm just, I'm just saying for she what I just. Yeah, she had just stepped out of the strip, strip club. She was a stripper. She was a known stripper. Yeah, she she so I, that. I, I she can admits imagine. That. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if if her and the 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 plaintiff mm -hmm. uh, know each other and they had a, a relationship, then that plaintiff is probably telling the truth because she know how her friend got down. Right. And the only thing is, I would say this, and I I can't judge. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm judging. You know, with Tasha K. Um, you have to make a decision as to whether you're going to go against that machine. And Tasha made that decision. There was a point in there where you always have a chance to step back a little bit because it ain't that important, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not that important to go to a place where your, your family gets threatened, your mm -hmm. life gets threatened or whatever. And I think there's a point where we're not completely out of the red yet. You all know, you've, you've spoken to me, but you've heard me speak before about what's happening with the dismantling of, you know, your Hollywoods and your, your Nashvilles and your uh, politicians and all that's going on behind the scenes, but it's not completely gone yet. So it is like taking your life in your hands to walk yeah. out there. It is like 
walking in front of a Mack truck almost. And because there's a chance that they could still get your ass. Does it say in the, in the story, does it say in the story what, what caused uh, the plaintiff to even come out with these remarks about Cardi? Well, there was a time where um, I was looking at Tasha's show personally myself. And Tasha, if somebody keeps being in the news over and over and the different things they do, she'll talk about them. So she started getting on to, going, getting on to Cardi and talking about her a lot. Cardi heard it and started responding. And so I didn't think it was going to go nowhere. And then the next thing mm -hmm. I know, there's a lawsuit on the table. And I'm like, so you wow. Gotta so you got to think about it. Like, you like when they tell you got to pick your battles? Like, you start mm -hmm. fucking, like, like it, it's certain artists out here now that are so deep, I'm going to just say that, are so deep that when you start fucking with them or, or sabotaging them, like, like for instance, I'll just you, I mean, I'll just, your mouth, yeah. And I, like, I'll use Beyonce. You fuck with right. the B, you the B, you the beehive coming to get your ass. Yeah. Well, right. Everything else behind that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Cardi, she has reached that level. Like, like I think she was just in the news recently for meeting some type of uh some some musical achievements and some other things, right? Mm -hmm. So she is one of those now, one of the elites. So when you right. start fucking, when you start fucking with that. And then, oh girl, I guess she got numbers. Remember, nobody fucks with you when you below a like when you below a certain amount of numbers. Right. Exactly. Of followers, it's like, oh shit, this motherfucker got some clout. They got a voice, and they got people that'll follow. Now you're disturbing or you're distracting the artist mm -hmm. from what they need to do. You're causing right. a problem. Yeah, because if it was, if it was me saying that, yeah, Cardi B wouldn't have said anything because I don't have those numbers yet. You know, so if it was me saying it is one thing, but the fact that Tasha is blowing up a spot, Tasha K does have numbers. Right. And yes. So, and then you, you, so you start, like you start disturbing or distracting the artist from being what they, look, why does Cardi B even need to respond? She's lost focus. She, her focus has shifted to this. We don't need her focused on that. We need this over here. Let's go ahead and knock this shit out. Hey, put, tie that motherfucker up in some legal litigations. We good. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. And see, that's that's what happened. And so that's that's and the then, situation. Okay. And then it makes and then it makes um the young lady more relevant now. People were what Cardi going at it with this one the whole time. Right. That, if Cardi had not responded, it would just kind of be over yeah. here. But now that Cardi right. responded, now her numbers are up. She may yep. have picked that battle and she may have said, you know what, my numbers are good. I got a steady come out of flow. This is probably going to mm -hmm. be the reason. I got four million to spare or a couple million to spare. And because she started my, getting a lot of sponsors is over time. Right. Wine sponsors, all kinds of sponsors. If I'm mentioning my name or responding to me, mm -hmm. what they say, uh, negative attention is just as good as positive attention, mm -hmm. right? So now, mm -hmm. what are we doing right now? We're talking oh, about the right. situation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Our numbers are going up. More views, more sponsorship, right. more whatever the hell. So it, it's probably tit for tat, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's just like, out of all the people to talk about, you want to talk about this one? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and sometimes it can be intentional. Right. You know, you know what? I started sometimes wondering about that. Bridget, I mean, there was a point there when uh, Tasha K was talking a lot and everything everything was going back and forth. I did start to wonder, you know, where it all was going. I kind of did. Um, oh, okay. Is that Shelton that in the in the in the chat mm. here? He said he did Okay. Oh. I so, can't see the chat. Okay. So. Oh shit, there's a whole lot going on in the chat. <laughs> right. <laughs> I gotta say, no problem. You be safe. Because that's that's uh that All is right. uh you know, make sure he's okay, Mike. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, so let's go on to the next story here, real quick. Uh, you know, because we're gonna get out of this tea soon. Because sometimes this 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 tea could take us for a while. Because this stuff be a little on the on the interesting side. Okay, we all have heard that Tiffany Haddish <clears throat> was arrested here in Atlanta for a DUI. Am I correct? Everybody's heard about that. Yeah. Well, she 
you know, she kind of put out a video. I'm going to see how y'all feel about this. Um, I'm going to see. Some people feel like she is really not taking her DUI arrest too seriously. Uh, she addresses the whole arrest in this video. It says that she was praying for a good man and God sent her four in a uniform. Okay, so she was on the Jimmy Fallon show and, um, you know, talking to him about everything. And he asked her about the, the DUI. And uh, she, while a lot of folks don't look at the arrest as, as a joke, she still chose to keep things light while addressing the situation. She was, you know, here in Atlanta, Peachtree City, uh, when this all happened. And so she said, I can say this, Jimmy, I've been praying for, to God to send me a new man, a good man. And God went ahead and sent me for in a uniform. And referencing the, her recent breakup with rapper Common, I wasn't expecting it. So the, the crowd laughed and everything. And uh, the comedian added that she's, uh, that she's not too worried about the arrest. She says, now I got a really great lawyer and we're going to work it out. Um, I've got to get my get my asking of things to God a little better. <sighs> well, I don't know how I feel about this right now. Well, I'm going to tell you how I feel about it in a few moments. According to the reports of TMZ, uh, she was pulled over at 4 a.m. on January 14th for allegedly falling asleep at the, way, at the wheel. The officers arrested her and, and uh, suspected that she had been using marijuana. Uh, she was able to post bond and the amount of uh, 1,666 and was released around 6.30 a.m. at uh, Fayette County Jail. Uh, luckily, no one was hurt. Okay, luckily, no one was hurt. That's where I'm standing right uh, there because I look at it this way. You're a comedian, the whole nine. We all have had people out there that have done different things, but still a DUI to me, y'all, is still serious. It's still, you know, you're falling asleep at the wheel, you're asleep at the wheel, Someone could have been seriously, seriously hurt or killed. And so that, that gets a little bit too touchy for me. But how do y'all feel about it? I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit back because I, you know, I, I did law enforcement for 11 and a half years. So uh, I, I got a lot to say, um, uh, but I'm going to be quiet for now and let y'all have at it. And when y'all done, y'all let me know when it's, when it's safe to come. <laughs> okay. Well, you know my feeling uh, <laughs> just now. <clears throat> but yeah, I I feel like I, I I can see her trying to you know still make it light because it is a subject or something that's kind of still heavy with everything that recently um, came you know to the forefront about her and Common's relationship and how she was surprised by some of the comments and stuff that was said. But um. <laughs> It's it's definitely not uh, one for her to uh, you know like please don't repeat this the same habit because of you know you you and your emotions and really going through a lot with this breakup or whatever's going on in your career but more so you know um, it, do that do that at home more so not in the public eye because everybody, everybody is watching and looking at you but we can't expect her not to be human either though too so it's kind of like a, a in between yeah it's yeah. kind of yeah. in between and obviously it's, to a certain degree it's like an outcry for right, for some exactly. additional help mm -hmm. or or mm -hmm. some family or somebody kind of encamp around her for a moment to kind of you know help her or to watch her or something, but um, yeah, she's definitely going through something. Can't fully pinpoint what it is, but she's definitely going through something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it reminds me a, of a lot of something. Yeah, it reminds me how she first came into the game. You no, know, she was, mm -hmm. um, you know, she was a comedian. Of course, she's still a comedian, but she was a comedian. You know, coming into the game, I remember mm -hmm. um, hearing the. Um, um, who was that Kevin Hart speak about, you know, how he oh, met her and about her being know, all the things that happened back stuff. then, you know, between them, you know, um, with her, you know, sleeping in cars. And so it's like, it seems like her focus is off. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, maybe because of the relationship and maybe it's because she's reached such a, such a height of, of uh, popularity 
that she may not know know how to um, handle all of it. No, first she was you no know, going from sleeping in your car, trying to make it, to now you made it. And not only that, you you're in a relationship with someone who who's been on top, you know, for a while. And mm-hmm. now you're breaking up with them, and now all that is coming, you know, to light. I think she just has a lot of um, emotional issues she has to solve for herself. Um, and trying to figure out how to handle the popularity, how to handle the fall while still being popular, you know, still being in the limelight. Um, almost kind of like Cat Williams, you know, how he, you know, he mm-hmm. stayed in the limelight, you know, getting into trouble, getting into trouble. Once he hit that plateau that, you know, everyone knew him, then it's like he started messing up and doing crazy stuff. And now you're in the limelight for doing, you know, crazy stuff. And everybody's trying to figure out you know, what's going on with you. Um, it just seems like that's a repetitive pattern that you see in, in Hollywood among everybody. <laughs> well, I, I'll say this, and I don't want to be nice about it. I, I really don't want to be nice about it, you know, because oh, I, I'll just on. say this. If, if you finna go ham on uh-huh. her specifically, if you finna, because it sounds like you got a, a, a certain yeah. individual, let me, let, 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 me, let me go and then yeah. you can tag away. All right. That's right. <laughs> um, uh, being, I guess, an aspiring comedian and having delved into that lifestyle for a minute, um, anyone who uh, I feel that decides to get up on stage and 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 and, and uh, attend to the public and, and and try to give make them laugh to to relieve some of their stresses, um, they're going to make light and that's that's how we do that's how we cope that's how we survive we make light of any and all <clears throat> situations regardless of how severe or how serious they are you try to find a way to do so because mm-hmm. that's even though the public may not agree that's that person's way of coping okay mm-hmm. number one he is okay number two her emotional dealings right mm-hmm. Me, being who I am, I remember the first time I got on stage as a comedian and an individual came to me and asked me specifically, hey, you did good, but let me ask you one question. Who hurt you? Mm. Because of the success I had on stage, it was like you were first timer, decent or good. I don't know. For that audience that I had, I, apparently it was it was thumbs up. But she asked me, who hurt you? And I was kind of taken back and I was shocked because I was like, yo, who was this person trying to read me? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I say emotional dealings, whatever she's going through and that being her being in, in that career field, she's making light of those situations because her emotional dealings, she's always been able to cope by making light of the situations. The audience may not necessarily agree mm-hmm. who the fuck for them when it's about me and not you. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the expectations of success. She's expected to be a certain way because she's famous. Understand this. I believe uh, Charles Barkley and Shaq, I believe they both kind of said this at, at, at one point in their life, um, along with a, a bunch of other famous people. Mm-hmm. I didn't ask to be a fucking role model. I didn't ask to take on the, you know, take on the role of being something for somebody else. Don't look at me. Look at your fucking mom and dad. Look at your parents as as your role models. Don't look at me. I'm human and I got a life too. I just happen to be a millionaire and in the limelight. And now y'all want to hold me to a certain standard. Fuck them standards. I'm me. I didn't ask for this shit. Well, will you have a responsibility? Fuck you and what you think about my responsibility, bitch. I didn't ask for that. I just happen to know how to play ball. I just happen to know how to tell a fucking joke. I just happen to know how to act on screen. Like, I didn't ask for all of that. So don't place that shit upon me. And then, uh-huh. two, they like to kind of go off with that, the, norm, the normalities of life. If she wasn't famous, we wouldn't even be talking about her right now. We wouldn't give two yeah. fucks. Right? So, and I'm like I said, being law enforcement, I have my own views about, you know, DUI and things like that and stuff like that. It's one of the reasons I kind of got out of law enforcement because I found it very hypocritical. Mm -hmm. Right? Law enforcement officers sit there and pull somebody over and will 
take somebody to jail, hem somebody up behind drinking and driving. But how many cops go to a bar, get shit faced, and then jump their ass behind the wheel and drive home? In the military, I watch I watch my commander do a keg stand, right? I watch my commander do a keg stand and say, "Hey, I got to get out of y'all," and then dip and get in his car and drive. One of the one of the troops, his troops, one of the people under his command as a cop in the military, get a DUI, hammer their ass. But you was just doing a keg stand and jumped in your jeep and drove off. You hammered their ass. So these 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 expectations or these things that, that people try to put on somebody, you don't know what the fuck going on in somebody's life. Now, yeah. we can say as an adult, you should be able to make better decisions. You have a lot to lose. You have a lot to risk. Because I have said this, when you have a lot, when you have shit to lose, you respond different or you react different. But who's to say, and in whatever emotional state that you're in, you didn't realize that you was whatever the fuck you was being a comedian on the road. So many shows on tour, tour after tour. You go in, you have a drink, hit the herb, start driving your body. Say, fuck this. I'm done. Mm -hmm. OK, no. y'all. Uh, I don't want to go I mean, long. We too long no. on Tiffany. I I'm just not making excuses. I'm not making excuses for the individual. Right. I'm saying there's to consider because. Right. right <laughs> consider. Now, whatever you think about that, because someone could have been injured, someone could right. have been. Okay, let's, let's, get, let's get to the real nuts uh, of, of everything. If it wasn't a, a popular person, I've been riding that ass like, like Zorro. That's number one. People ride ass like Zorro. If it wasn't Tiffany Haddish, I'm going to tell you something. Tiffany got a lot of her mind because she sold out. Right. And that's you not don't personal. get that far. You don't start hosting shows and doing all the stuff she's doing unless you sell out. She got a lot on her mind and she's trying to figure out her next moves, I'm sure, because whoever that is, is handling her. And if anybody knows the business, know the word I'm saying, handling her. She got, yeah, damn sure she does have a lot on her mind. I ain't feeling sorry for nobody who could have killed someone. I'm sorry. I don't, give, I don't give a damn what the situation is. I'm not going to feel sorry for a single person out there driving and falling asleep behind the wheel, talking about how they were feeling, talking about how she feels. She could have killed somebody. Go sit your ass down. Now let's go. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The only thing I say to that is because a lot of people sit there and say, well, she could have killed somebody. Now, my next question is, how many sips of wine that you done took out of a glass and jumped your ass in a car and drove? I don't do that. I don't do it. You can hold your viewpoints, but I'm, I guarantee you some of the people that's, that's passing judgment, or the ones who jump but their those ass same people will get persecuted. My point is, those same people will get persecuted, but because she is a styra, people feel for a man. If I'm feeling sorry for her, she did the same thing that you know Rudy Poot did out there too, and they got in trouble, and people hated them. So it's the same same game for me. You could have no, hurt somebody. It is, but what I'm saying is, just like with an average entity. Right. An average entity. I guarantee you that certain all of these things ain't taken into consideration mm -hmm. because you a po black motherfucker and we don't want you on the streets and we don't give a fuck about your life. Anyway, go sit your ass down for 40 years like the guy in Louisiana. Somebody was it Louisiana? else might have got. Yeah. Was it the guy somebody in Louisiana or who got a weed case? A man been in jail 40 years for a weed case. Right. But my point. You, that's my point. So, I, so I'm agreeing with you, but I'm just saying mm -hmm. when you say people felt like this, you know me, I'm going to play devil's advocate on both ways. But like I said, as a law officer, I, I, people come to the gate drunk as fuck. Hey, man, what the fuck you doing? You got kids in the back. Mm -hmm. Now, man, the person who driving drunk with kids in the car is just fuck that. So does it make it, you know, not as bad if he's just driving by himself without no kids? Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I totally get you. And I'm not defending the young, the, the lady, Tiffany Haggadish. I don't, you know, I don't really follow her like that. But I'm just thinking how other people may think. Like I said, the fact remains, somebody could have got hurt. She's lucky yeah. no one hurt. Yeah. And that's why, and, and I guarantee you, that's why some people felt the way they felt. Hey, you could have hurt somebody, but here you are making jokes on TV. Yeah. Right. 
But when I say, and I, I, people might get mad at me when I say that she sold out. I don't mean the kind of sellout that people think. I'm talking about that real, real thing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to find out at a certain point here, those people who sold out because you don't get to star in shows and all the kind of stuff that she's do doing. A lot of these people who you keep seeing them star in shows and movies, they had to get there a certain way. There's a certain route. You as an actor and actress, you don't get these high roles and these recurring things by just being good. Nobody gives a damn if you're good. You gotta sell to those those you know, those. Uh, you know what it is because I don't know if this is part of your tea or not, but I we just heard recently, and I'm changing the subject. We not mm -hmm. subject, but um, individual. We just heard recently that um, the young lady that's, that's real famous for the voices of Boondocks, uh, her, 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 son, her son's yeah, committed. And the rumor mill is based off of what you believe in, is that her son was a sacrifice. You know what I mean? Now, That's what we they all do. grew up. We all grew up with Regina King, and we all love and you know her, and like you can't find no wrong that she's ever done. So for that rumor to kind of come out for one of our greatest or greats, mm -hmm. as they say, I'm trying to figure out like like what sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Who the fuck wants to lose a child? Well, right. let me say this. Let me say this. First of all, uh, I'm not saying that it did happen at all. Um, of course, condolences to Regina King, but it is a very known, well-known fact that in the entertainment industry at those very, very high levels, that kind of thing does happen. I can call some names. I'm not sure if I should do it on the air here. I prefer to do it off the air of people who there's been different evidences of them uh, sacrificing either friends or loved ones in order to climb <clears throat> higher, to get a higher status in the industry. That's something that's kind of, you know, well known. When I, the, when I first, oh, go okay. ahead. I was under the impression that happened to get them to a to a high to a high right. level, not not for those who have already you know exceeded. Some of the things that were being said was we haven't heard from Regina King in a long time. Bush, well, I don't know. No, I, mean, no, I don't know. Boondocks has been on there for and and once your money's right and you're right, but they but but this is I'm just telling you the the the, the, the stuff that's been on the on the news and media, social mm -hmm. media and all this is that. Man, she just popped up out of nowhere. Now she got this, she got this, and she got this. And I'm just telling you, anytime I hear a, a what is it, a Cadillac or a Buick commercial, her voice is on there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I would say this: there, there was a point where she was quiet as a church mouse, and then all of a sudden she did come back and was doing this and that and a third and this and that and this and that. And you know something? There, there is a thing. There's a lot of people who are waking up, and some of it is rumor. You know, because we don't know for sure until all this news that I'm saying is going to come out is going to come out at a certain point, uh, and from some legit sources, you know, that we will all get it. But there are times when people want to climb higher and they have to show their dedication to whatever false god it is, whether it's Baphomet, whether it's uh, Marduk or whatever these, these ones who they, they pray to as their gods and they have to show their, their loyalty in order to show their loyalty. They participate in child sacrifices. They participate in all kinds of things of that nature, that really, really dark nature. This is what Hollywood does in Nashville and, and uh, politicians and all that. We, we've talked about that before. So that's kind of old hat. That's old news for us. Mm -hmm. But there's times when they, they do do uh, the sacrifices of the the ones you know that are around them to to raise higher, but I can't say anything about Regina King specifically because I don't know anything specifically. I haven't heard from my insight sources, but I know this: if her name shows <laughs> up on one of my list that I have, we'll know it went down. That's all I can say. Uh, That's all I can say on that. If her name shows up on one of those damn lists, we'll know. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that I've read that been um, in the stories about it had to do with um, him possibly have been committed suicide due to loss of money through Bitcoin or something like that. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm just, yeah, Bitcoin, yeah. 
So that's the only thing. A lot of people off buildings when, they, when that crash, that's going to crash. I mean, Bitcoin is going to crash. I, I'm sorry for those out there who might be getting at me right now, but it's going to crash. <laughs> Heard some stuff about Bitcoin and who behind that and and, and what the BTC is. BTC baby trafficking coin. Of well, they, but they were saying <laughs> that they were saying that certain um, adversaries are behind it, trying to um, purposely. It's owned, by, uh, it's owned by them, right? Trying to uh, sabotage the uh, American of uh, you know financial system. Yeah, what it is, is that the system is changing. I think I've kind of told you all about that behind the scenes. And the new system will not be controlled by them. The old system, uh, the Swiss system and everything was completely controlled by them. The, the fake ass money at the Federal Reserve, the fake ass Federal Reserve, which is a private company, the fake ass IRS private company, all this stuff like that. Oh, I'm probably going to get in so much trouble tonight for all the stuff that I'm saying. But <laughs> the thing is, all those were private companies. They all were fake and everything. And so all that is going down. So this Stuff that is coming in, the new money, the new system, the whole nine, they won't control it. So therefore, they created their own crypto in order they can start to get people involved and they can try to control. But their whole thing is going to get snatched from under them in just a moment. When everything goes down, they're going to get their asses snatched too. So anybody who's listening, pull your money out, put it in XRP or somewhere like that. But if you stay over there with uh, Bitcoin... They're going to hand you your ass in a minute. Yeah, you're no, not. not talking about investing in Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Thank you, man. <laughs> yes, it's bad. But the XRP is somewhere like that. Don't, don't do Bitcoin. Hey, do you that. start threatening uh, American financial institutions. <laughs> Gee, you thought you had problems. Right. <laughs> but you know, look, I've been get off this, or we might not have a show next week, so we get off this. I'll be like, click, click, live. I'm trying to go live. Click. How many viewers we got? That's what it depends. I know, right? <laughs> I think they hang it up on us. They don't want to hear it. You know, that's one thing that I noticed that. Uh, when you talk about a lot of stuff, people are not ready to hear anything. And that's why I really feel like when things come out, some people are going to lose their minds because they don't want to discuss it right now. But we're going to move on. Let's talk about Wendy Williams real quick. Now, I, I don't know how true all I of this is. Yeah, well, you know, she's had all the different guest hosts. Uh, from Sherry Shepard to Kim Whitley and Finesse to Michael Rappaport to, um, oh, I, I cannot stand when Leah Romini is up there with her friend Melissa. The, I, that's the ones I don't like. They're so boring to me. It's like Lucy and Ethel. And I was not a fan of Lucy and Ethel. <laughs> I watched it when I was little. I didn't know any better. But as I learned in the later years who they were and what was going on with that, I, I don't really care for all that. So when I look at them, that's all I see is Lucy and Ethel. Oh God. But what about Wendy? Wendy, now there's an article. Like I said, some of this stuff comes out. This is radio radar online online. I had heard that there was a separation of her and the team where they were not speaking to one another. But now there is a, a alleged article that is out here and they're saying that Wendy is saying she vows to fire her entire staff. Uh, the paranoid talk show host says it is her or them uh, following months of long disappearance. And so um, the, they're saying that the 57-year-old television personality has allegedly grown paranoid and feels betrayed by her employees. She believes that staffers have been gossiping about her and her mysterious health condition behind her back. I mean, would you think that they do anything else? I mean, of course they're doing that. Uh, Wendy believes that the staff have all betrayed her, and if she comes back, she wants to completely clean house. She actually wants to fire the whole staff. This is an insider who told the, the son. She is paranoid about the staff gossiping about her and delusional in the idea that cleaning house could even happen, and she's like trying to hold people hostage. <laughs> That's what the person stated, alleging that Wendy is saying, I will only return if everyone is fired. And, uh, and then the insider claims that there is no way it could or would happen. Uh, now, the, 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 they say, and it's the Two-Faced Outlook reportedly 
both ways that she can't come back and work with the staff. Uh, she doesn't trust them and she can't do the show that way. And they don't trust her. So she had been there in five months with no tangible information <laughs> or updates coming in from her team. <sighs> Okay, the latest update comes one week after another insider alleged that Wendy has become a, a shadow of her former self. They claim that she can no longer get dressed without assistance and she doesn't recognize those closest to her. Wow. They say the Wendy yeah. Williams show host has reportedly mm -hmm. lost her famous fiery personality in, mysterious, in this mysterious uh, health crisis. Now, also, Tasha Hay has also said that uh, Wendy was back in rehab. So I don't know. I don't know. But I did hear that too. Um, that, you know, because at one time she was abusing drugs. And, and if you look at some things, and I'll just say this, and it's just my opinion. But when she decided to tell the story about what happened with her husband, it's not like she just made the decision. It happened because of the mistress got pregnant again, again, and decided that she was not going to this time abort this baby. And she pushed that information out there, which Wendy, in my opinion, decided to run ahead and tell her story. And those stories that she put out there, those movies, those were totally her uh, depiction that she wanted to give the world. Michael's over there doing all kinds of mechanical stuff. Look at him. <laughs> I told you my laptop was gone and I'm using my phone. Ooh, boy. Right. Um, so, um, I, you know, I had to I had to charge it up. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> back, to, back to Wendy. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it just seems to me like <clears throat> there. I'm sure the staff is uh, have a lot of opinion. I, the staff, I mean, why wouldn't you? Your boss, so to speak, has been gone for five months and, you know, I I can't see it any other way that people would not be wondering on a daily basis, what's up with you? Cause, I mean, what do y'all yeah. feel? Well, I mean, if you, if you, you know, <clears throat> the people who somehow find your way into having your own personal TV show, meaning you got people who follow you, who, who you got a fan base, and uh, you, you you start to act a little weird or, or shit start going a little left for you, they're going to want to know, hey, uh, I'm following this person, and either they truly, genuinely care, you know, or, you know, they some gossipers because that's what your theory is based on, or that's what your, your whole uh, market is based on. And they're going to mm -hmm. gossip about their ass too. Shit, you can't, you know, what birds of a feather fly together. You gossip, shit, they're going to gossip. You can you go to, you know, <laughs> you go to freaking out and acting crazy and they don't know what's wrong, right? right. We don't know you have a medical condition until you stay right. or put out that you have a medical condition. Hey, that motherfucker looked like he was on that shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, if, if I'm a gossiper, then everybody who's on my team is like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm in here. That means because they into the same shit. So right. I, I beg not to get gossiped about when your whole fucking, you know, uh, brand is based on gossiping. Yeah. Yeah, she went from telling the stories to being the story. Being the story. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can't get mad. You can't get mad when when when, when uh, the content to which you make make you know your money off of or, or build your brand off of decides to continue on supporting you but talking about you, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I mean, that's that's true for sure, for sure. You know, so I I've heard some other things, but I think we have to wait for this this kind of story to shape up a little. Um, I, I wonder if they will do a permanent replacement. I wonder if Sherry Shepard, who I think to me is the most uh, balanced 
and, and the guest hosts have been there. She's she's most balanced because she has she has a, a talk show host history. She's funny, you know, she knows how to handle things. She's pretty balanced compared to the rest of them. So I really wonder if that will be the replacement, but there's there's a lot of uh I think there's a lot of unrest. That's a good word. There's a lot of unrest over there. And I, I don't know if even if Sherry takes on the show, that show may only make it for like another season or so. He mad still. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to cover mm -hmm. him up. That's you know what? They can give it to Tasha K. <laughs> 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 yeah. Nah, I don't. I don't think Tasha K got any more to say. No, <laughs> leave that alone. She, she, hey, get, hey, that a little bit. she can't be yeah, no. She'll, she'll take it if they ask her. She got some money. She got to pay off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, hey, give it to Tasha K. Whoever I think. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? She can't be no worse than Wendy. She, I, I don't know if Tasha K is younger than Wendy. Nobody but it can be worse than Wendy. I'm sorry. So if, if she's younger than Wendy, if, if she's younger than Wendy and she's got a following, then you are securing at least another couple of years mm -hmm. of, you know what I'm saying, uh, <laughs> So, I mean, I don't know. You know, may maybe that's it. Maybe we just maybe we just helped put them on. Maybe we gave them an idea. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, uh, the, if that was a message you were sending to your cousin, you put it on the inside chat. That's on the oh, inside shit. chat. Oh, yeah, shit. I mean, but when I look, I'm looking at one of the chats and I keep seeing, <laughs> I see a whole bunch of Russians. You put it on your house. Y'all yeah, if, if you got yeah, private, it's something else. Yeah, it's private and it's comment. It, it's it's some it's some Russian it's some Russian it language. Russian, yeah. Yes, I don't know it's what's not, going on there. Well, I, well, I, I don't write this. Veronica said she wish she could be here. I think she's still trying to work out her phone. Hey, look, here. we started so. talking about Bitcoin, and 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 they came in this motherfucker, didn't they? Like, <laughs> well, <laughs> let me go check my status. To even still see if we live. Oh, I tell you, oh, oh, Veronica, we here. She says she's well. She's in tears now. She's trying to get her phone straight. So, but we we still here for works out, girl. We all yeah, need like to pra I, practice I with told Veronica. You, uh, on the phone. Like I told you, Tanya, I'm having technical difficulties. My computer just decided to crap out on me. So um, uh -huh. normally would be, the camera would be from my computer and then I could participate in the chat via my phone. But um, I only got one source. So for me to switch apps, I'm right. taking my out of this one and, and, and into something else. And then I'm not what? present. I don't get to see the, you know what I mean? Oh, what? And Michael yeah. likes this shot right here because he says closer up, you get to see. So the Mike likes this shot right here because I changed the shot the other night. He was like, "Why'd you change it? You gonna give me this other shot now?" Here, here comes Margo. Is gonna change the shot back again. So don't get mad, Mike. That it changed. That's see. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Now my Hate phone it. be real sensitive sometimes, so it did its own thing just a minute ago. I'm like, what? Yeah, everybody's hey. having a technical issue. Uh, I want to say this because we're about to go to the living room in a minute. We're gonna all the other stories. We just have to save them for next week. But are you all in places where it's getting super duper cold? Yeah. It's snowing now. We're in a snowstorm right now. It's snowing outside. Wow. Yeah. The temp is dropping here. The the temp's supposed to be dropping tonight. So yeah. it's snowing in here. The heat just got cut on. Yeah, the heat just kicked on. So, yeah, the really? temp is dropping. Yeah, it's snowing out there. Uh-oh, I'm and in I'm trouble. Shoving in snow. Let me, let me, let me cover him up. Y'all, so let me, I'm, I'm going to be back. I'm going to put y'all on hold for just a few moments. Yeah, look, we'll talk about the sales. He came back and said, he came back and said, hey, get your ass in here and get my covers fixed. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, but um, no, nah, man, I like I've I've never understood why. Cause think about it, it's a lot of people that make their money talking about famous people. You know what I mean? And they, okay. I'm back. I think what it was is like 
You know, to yeah, me, like this room people. is the only room in the house that does what, what, not what? get cold. You rude as a, you rude as hell. We was having a whole conversation, and you come I'm to the sorry. top. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's your I show, but I mean, talking. look, I never <laughs> stopped talking. I got off the air, kept talking, came right back on talking, I never stopped. <laughs> But you told us to carry on while you was gone, and then you came back in here as if we wasn't carrying the hell on. I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm serious. I was talking about the room being cold, but this light warms it up. But my man down here, he still says it's cold. But okay, I'm... <laughs> and we were talking about people. Famous people being humans, and we were carrying on with the show, and then here you is talking about Fido. <laughs> stop! Stop! Well, you Just know what? stop! I, I I ain't messing with Michael. <laughs> Michael yeah. knows I'm still do what I want to do. He know I'm laughing. I'm still do <laughs> what I want to do. <laughs> but um, okay, y'all, we're gonna move on. Uh oh, we got some people showing up in the in the chat there. So, Shamika, is that the Shamika that came on? Why yeah. Not? Yeah, yeah. Hey, girl. <laughs> okay, y'all. It, it is time for us to officially go into the living room. So, are y'all ready? Live in the living room. <laughs> okay, here we go. Welcome to the living room. This is where we discuss all types of things in a, a forum a type of style. And, you know, everybody gives their opinion. And, uh, you know, like I tell people all the time, just be your, your best self, your best animated self. But the living room hails from uh, the, the our radio days where we talked about when you were young and your company would come over and they'd sit in the living room with the parents or what have you. And they'd be just talk it, talk it, talk it, talk it, talk it. And you go in there and you'd be like, oh, they still talking. But you'd be like when they bring the kids <laughs> up so that y'all can go in the room and tear up the house while they're in there talking because nobody paid attention to y'all during that time. So this is the <laughs> living room. So welcome to the living room. Tonight's topic is Oh My versus new minds now this was a michael topic here and mike you had a controversy going on between the club and the lounge but you have some other things tell us what it is about old minds and new minds that you felt that, that this was a good thing for us to go into tonight well uh, so i was uh in, in this room right here trying to create what i felt like was some fire when it came to <laughs> Make, making a song. Um, and, you know, when I make a song, I have uh, trusted agents that I send it, send my songs to to kind of get feedback. And uh, now I can say this. These motherfuckers give you feedback. You know what I'm saying? They're not trying to spare no feelings at all. They give you feedback. Uh, uh, and sometimes, you know, as an artist, you pour your heart and soul into something and, you know, you got a, you got a thought process. You know, you got you know, uh, research and you look in dictionaries and the sources, you look at different shit, something, and then somebody got the background. I think Shelton came, came back in. I think he got a little bit of sound got, there. You got more than one, you got more than one, phone, one, one, one entity that you're looking at. Shelton came back in. I think he got a little bit of sound there. There you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Welcome back, so, Shelton. Yes, everything. Hey, I'm glad to. We we just had a fire drill. You know, uh, we up here in the mountains, and we under a blizzard advisory. Yep. Um, yeah. So it's coming down pretty hard outside. We it's are uh, they're, they're 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 two down. feet. Yeah, two feet wow. right now. Wow. Okay. What you say? Everything straight. Yeah, yeah. We good. We good. All okay. Right. 
Cool, 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 cool. So, old oh. minds versus new minds, right? I, I've been following. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, so back oh, to so what you, I was. Yeah, so, you, so, when you the witness my mean girl uh, rant on Tiffany Haddish, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. back, okay, to, back, to, back to what brought up this concept. Um, so, you know, I share my music and, and these trusted agents or trusted agents for a reason, because they will like 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 the, what like the Spanky Johnson said in life, <laughs> they will spare expense on your ass. OK, um, I right, now. So and um, my feelings was hurt. And I ain't going to lie. I'll be honest. My feelings was hurt because I put a lot of work in shit into my lyrics, making sure they had meaning. And I, and I sent the shit out and I said, hey. This is a rough draft. It needs more. <laughs> it needs more. You need a second verse. I said, rough fucking draft, right? Again, it was like, well, you 41, and what you doing talking about the club? So the name of the song that I did was Walk in the Club, when I walk in the club. Now, apparently the word club to certain old motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, or a certain age group um, is offensive. So I tried to explain in theory, it don't have to be club. It can be club, lounge, pub, country bar, you know, Spanish bar. I don't give a fuck. When you step in the place. <laughs> I ain't even sending it to him. So he already get it. So, oh, it's about to get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I try to explain that it doesn't necessarily mean club. So I will we will put this out there and then I'll come back and explain my theory. But the song was, you know, when I walk in the club, I'm you know, blah 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 blah. Um and so on and so forth. But they gave me the motherfucking business about it being a club, you know what I'm saying, and then trying to explain to me the difference between the two. That's where I'm a part of it. And some of them are on my trusted agents are on here. So if y'all uh, would like to share with the world what your version was or what your beef was with my shit, yeah, let them know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You just put them on the spot, huh? <laughs> okay, so for me, for me, one, I thought the beat didn't match the lyrics. I felt the beat should have been something more, more suave, you know, like you know, chill. The beat just for me did not match the words. And then the words themselves, okay, it's like hearing your papa say, you know, <sighs> something that a 15 year old say. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I'll say something a fifteen year old would say. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm it's not. It's like trying to keep. It's, it's like trying to keep keep to the you know, hip side of no, the hip side of life. Okay, we grown. I'm gonna look at that and like so, we grown. So my thing is, Go to so my club and be grown. So my thing is this: if you know me and my personality, you know everything I do is with intent. So the intent is one thing. Now, I will say this. When I sent the rough draft and I got the initial feedback, what happened when you heard the second verse? It was better. It was. It was better. Because it was, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Rough draft versus final <laughs> product. But you also had to explain it to me. And normally you don't have to explain, you know, your lyrics for me to be like, okay, yeah, I get it now. Okay, cool. No, it wasn't like that. I didn't feel it. The first time I didn't feel it. I didn't but feel when, it. When, when the final product was there, you're not the only one I sent it to. Next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you putting me on the spot. Um, away. <laughs> it wasn't that I was I was giving constructive criticism criticism. For the most part, half of me felt like I might have spoke too soon because you was like, it's a rough draft. I'm like, no, I get it. But you told me to be honest. Um, I was okay with the idea. I was okay with the idea. And I know where you were trying to go with it. But All the right. only thing I told you that with you 
in the midst of you saying it, some of the the like the the chorus line or whatever, it was oh. like you speaking it like the music we're trying to put out now. And I'm like, that's not you per exactly. se. That's as exactly much. what I told him. Exactly but what I said. But I said you <laughs> on certain <laughs> parts you gotta make me you if you no, want to go deeper. <laughs> if you <laughs> I was like, if you want to make me believe it, you gotta put more emphasis or more something into exactly. it to make it be like, okay, when you lost, when you I lost, walk in the I, I didn't what? say club, but I'm 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 thinking if 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 a guy walks into a space and he wants to command your attention, he's have having to make sure that he's making it believable. The energy and what he's giving off is be like, you know what? Look at me without me telling you or running up into your face saying, "Yeah." Did I hear this one at all, Michael? I just I, said, I make I, it more I believable. I think I said to you, if not. You see, if, if not, when I when, whatever I do see it, it's the final product. It ain't going to be no damn rough draft. No, send her the rough draft so she can have the same feelings about it that we yeah. did. Same feelings. But it, I was about to show your, your presence in the space. If you're trying to command that attention, just make, make it a little bit more believable. Right. So that's all. I was like, make me believe it. Say something fly. Say something catchy. Make me believe it just a little bit more. But I say so, it's good. It's headed in the right direction. But just you know, and it was a certain key, a certain key point. So I was like, something, the timing or something's off. So I was being honest, and I was I was keeping it real. You know, you I ain't gonna have you going in. Did I? Did I? When y'all gave me constructive criticism, and I and I and even though I you know it, I kind of probably responded in a little like like oh my gosh, but did I or did I not say? Keep it real. I, I like. I I want the constructive criticism. He's the one. He said, "Keep it real," but he wants. He really wants you to tell him what he wants to hear. No. Tell me it's great. Tell me it's, you love it. No. So, <laughs> because said, no. Mind, <laughs> no. No. Because in my mind, I knew where the song was going to eventually end up. They did not. But they. So they did exactly what I asked, and I value that. <laughs> I'm saying I value that. So. Um, even though know, it it may sting a little bit, it, it let me know, you know what it is. It's final product. I feel like now, you know what I'm saying. They look the the motherfuckers being that uh, examining shit. But anyway, um, so with that conversation came. It, what they're not telling you is with that conversation came. But you talking about a club and you forty something years old. We don't go to the club no more. We go to lounges, and I'm like. The fucking song don't sound right when I say fucking lounge, right? <laughs> so oh, now, Veronica so they, just texted me. She said, get your boy. <laughs> she, you must hey. be going off. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they proceeded to explain to me the difference between a club and a lounge. Uh-huh. Right? So they proceeded to tell me this. And so we got on this whole thing of Club apparently is for young folks. Lounge is apparently for uh, mature folks of a certain age, right? My whole thing was with the concept of the song, it don't matter if it's a club, lounge, pub, bar, grill, whatever. When I walk in this motherfucker, this is what's happening, right? So when I say old mind versus young mind, is there a difference between a club and a lounge? Yes. I would say yes. I did it. <laughs> yes. A club, a club is a state of mind in, a, in, a, in its own way. Okay, you're going to go to a club and both are going to hear loud music. True. But in a lounge, you're going to be there Don't speak to my chill, relax. My speak your shit without my thunder. Go ahead. <laughs> In a lounge, like if I go to a lounge, maybe a hookah lounge or whatever, but I know if I go there by myself, I'm good. If I go there with a gang of people, I'm still good. We're there to chill, be amongst ourselves, indulge in some grown folks conversation, mm-hmm. maybe drink, that maybe smoke, but it's, it's nothing, there's not a lot of dancing going on. And the, the ones that are <laughs> dancing, maybe around the table, whatever, but it's just all about, you know, vibing out and chilling. A club, Everybody's on the dance floor shaking their ass, and everybody who's not at the bar or you're trying to go home, 
or something's going on and it's too much energy, it's too much. I just too much. Next, now, I was past I was past that when I left Guam. I was past it. Next, well, I'm not more comfortable sitting you can have, there. You, you can have. Okay. I'll just go ahead and have a lounge Somebody. inside a club. And um you can have a lounge inside a club, but and then you then you got a type the, the type of venue that it is. Like you got hip hop clubs, you got salsa clubs, you got uh you know merengue clubs, you got different kinds of venues. So um but there is like a, a jazz lounge. You might have a couple of people slow dancing on the floor, but and that's that's the gators. You wear the gators out to that place, you know, with the, right. with the suit and the vest. You know, you go out like that with the pea coat on. I it's like to go to places tire. like that more than I'm on the floor with Lil John getting crunk with the East Side Boys. You know what I'm saying? And it's the time I'm I'm not in that I'm not in that rah rah club. I'm not in that no more. Exactly. Exactly. I'm out of that why season. I'm out. Why of you season. out of that scene? Why are you out of that scene? <laughs> Margo, Margo, you next. You got something to say? She also, why are you out of that scene? Yeah, I, why am I? Out I, of that scene? I know that each. Yeah. Oh, because now it's first. more drill music. You know, like it's more about killing people that look just like me. I got dreads. I got tattoos. Every rap song now is talking about pulling up on somebody with a thirty round stick. You know, killing me. I'm just trying to make sweat and love. You know what I'm saying? That's, I'm trying to do that. You trying in, to in vibe and chill? But I'm not with that no more. I, <laughs> I've been listening you. to Phil Perry. That's what I've been listening to. Ooh, say that. <laughs> say that. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> um, each, each, <laughs> yeah, each space gives off a different energy. And mm -hmm. uh, for me, um, you knew what area or whom you were going to hang with or what what your intent was when you got there in the first place, uh, right. depending upon uh, <laughs> the night and what transpired throughout that night. A club is more so seen as that space for um, a younger group because you're just there to just do almost some of everything, <laughs> if you think about it. At that age and that place, you were, you were there to just, totally have fun and just to follow wherever that fun was. Um, right. As you mature, um, different spaces or places, it, you know, it was like, well, I'm not trying to do all that. I'm not trying to get that, that throw that evening. And I just want to go out and relax. So you're, you're thinking about like a, a lounge or a lodge is, you know, with, with a little bit older crew with the older minded folks. Um, mm -hmm. Where you can kind of just the, the numbers are lower, the space, the space, I don't know, either bigger or smaller, but you know the group of people there. Some places have an age requirement. Some places, <laughs> you know, they they that all you don't have yeah. to be over 18 or 21, depending upon what's served there. So, you know, for me, I I ain't been out in no club or no lounge or no place or space in a while. <laughs> but I'm more low key. But if I'm asked to join people there, I'm, I'm definitely not necessarily going to a club because all that stuff is starting to get like too loud and it's sounding like nonsense in my ear. Exactly. And all I keep hearing, with, like I might like the beat, but that's all I like about your song because that that mumble rap I can't do that. If you ain't got <laughs> no 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 basis or no premise or no, no you substance. know what's the reason behind your music, you no substance. substance. Yeah, all I right. just like so I can't I can't. So Tanya, so now you see where the topic come from, old mind versus young mind. Now watch this. Understand. But you didn't allow me to have my review, but go ahead. Yeah, let, oh, let her, let her, let her, yeah. Because I am actually probably closer to being an old mind that you have here on the panel. You Ain't know? no closer. So, whatever. Um, don't, don't try to insult. This, don't call don't insult my girl now. Yeah, because <laughs> That mean girl still there because remember over the holidays oh, I wanted to cuss people out right and so the mean girl still here. <laughs> we, 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 go ahead, we witnessed it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, y'all don't witness nothing. I I cuss some people out for real, for real. But um, 
it was fun too. It was really good. But I was, <laughs> first of all, Shelton's got me on this thing where I have got to now go find my Phil Perry because my old mind says I need to listen to that. You know what I'm saying? I got to, got to get up on some Phil Perry tonight. But that is the man. Yes. People slept on him. Mm-hmm. I was mad about that. You know, I went to see him. Y'all he was good. I'm young in that area because I have no idea who that is exactly. So Ooh, y'all might have definitely. Girl. You should definitely look him up. Yeah, I man, think uh-huh. that. He, y'all he, might he be nice. same way, to be honest with you. Huh? We might have to play a little bit at that at the at the show. <laughs> but, okay, but, uh, might. I said Sheldon and Margot might be the same age. I'm I'm on, I'm 36. <laughs> but I feel like I'm an old you soul in be... a young body. Like I've been here before. I've been, yeah, been here before. Uh, that's that's for sure. That's, you know that's what I'm saying? Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the way that I feel about everything, like, well, I, I agree with Bridget about the music and, and the whole layout of the lounge in a club. I am far more comfortable by myself when I go to a lounge. I can kick back. I can have a drink. You know, somebody mm-hmm. wants to join me or, or not. I'm, I'm better with that. But the club represented something totally different to me because me and all my friends went to the club for, for fun, but we also went for work. One day we discovered that we had been working all the time at the club because we were always shooting stuff. You know what I'm saying? So we, we thought it was entertaining ourselves, but all that loud, boom, 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 boom. The, that was all work involved in all that mess, you know? And everything that went with it, it was just like, you know, you go to some of those clubs, you feel like your, your head is going to fall completely off with the, how loud everything was. So I can, I can, the difference for me now is in my old mind, Michael, is I, I like nice and relaxed and, you know, I, I love loud. And, and stuff like that. <laughs> All right. So now, I, I, and it's it's not fair to the people, and and this is not a promo, but it's not fair to the people who who don't know, like who don't know um what the lyrics or the content or the the the, the theme of the song was. I will try to explain real quick without going into it. But basically, it was basically saying, when I walk in the club, this is what happens. When I walk in the club, here's who I'm with. When I walk in the club, here's more shit that happens, right? And, and so on and so forth. Now, <clears throat> people were like, what well, is different between a club? You get to you, you old, because they know who I am personally. You 40 something, you ain't no club, you could be in no damn club. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> right? Because I, I don't go to clubs. You know, I go to places where, where it's safe and I can keep my gun where it is because I, I took it with me uh, right. because, you know, nowadays these young cats be tripping. Uh, you know, I'm too old to play games. I don't play with children. You know what I mean? So, um... And even that's in the song. <laughs> right, and that's in the song, right? So, <clears throat> what I'm saying, so we get to this point, and their whole focus, because this is where I kind of got a little bit frustrated. I'm like, come on, y'all. Y'all know me. You know how I think. Think outside the box. It ain't just about the club. When you choose, here we go, whether you're going to a club, lounge, pub, grill, bar, whatever, Midtown, for the folks in Austin. <laughs> or, the, or the Elk Lodge, and that's for the older folks. Uh, yeah, in Midtown, for the older folks, there's some shit to go down in Midtown. I'm telling you that now. Um, yeah. Right. No, I said the so, Elk's Lodge. Right. Elk's Lodge. Look, now that's old. Um, look here. So, you got to keep this whole thing was about versus lounge. My whole concept was when you get ready to go out, regardless of where you're going to, a club or a lounge, when you get ready to go out, you wash your ass, you put on, you find a nice outfit. Ladies, they put on makeup. Men, they shave. They, you know, they make sure they looking good, smelling good, feeling good. Mm-hmm. Shell, you know what I'm talking about, right? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Right, looking good, smelling good, feeling good. Right, so you got your best shit on. You got your face and shit looking up. You looking sharp, right? You looking sharp as a razor. Then you get to the establishment. Whatever establishment you're going to, what do they have? You walk through the door. There's music. There's a fucking DJ. There's music playing. Number two, there's a bar serving liquor. Number three, there's a dance floor. And number four, there's places to sit. 
if you're in a club that's called VIP, if you're in a lounge that's called regular seating. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> crazy. If you go to a country bar, the same thing. So when you walk up in the spot, when you walk up in the place, these are the things that happen. Certain people are looking at you based off you of your. Chose to use the word club. Yes, but for the song, I used the word club, and that is all these old folks could focus on was the word club. So, well, if they old, then I must be ancient. You know, there's, you know, they, no, so, you know, so they, you know, they got the same cougars. You might be a leopard. You know what I mean? Like that. That's all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they might be a leopard. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm gonna say I'll go to the chat real quick because Shamika says, in addition to in addition, based on my experience, lounges also have more seating. So yeah. you can lounge and chill. Clubs, not right. so much. Yeah. Well, but you know it, something, Mike? It depends I'll, I'll on say, a it depends on the popularity of the lounge, but she is correct. She is mm -hmm. absolutely correct. And that's why people go there. You don't have to fight for space. You don't have to fight for seating. You won't have to fucking have a, um, what is it? Uh, 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 everybody got to pay. You got to buy a, a, a drink minimum or so many bottles of bottle service or some shit right. like that. Right. Very. Yes. He's right. I, I totally agree with her. Right. And you ain't got to yeah. fight to get to the bar to be able to squeeze between somebody to order your drink. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know like, let's look at it. I want I want to look at the whole old minds versus new minds in a general sense. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. In, just in a general sense, because like I know I said, Michael, I said, give me some words, and then Michael's like, young cats, old minds. Me, yeah, old was old minds. Old, old. What was it? You told me yeah. that. And yeah. So, we could, go ahead. Old heads. Old heads. Old, old heads. heads and, yeah. Old heads. And then after you said that, I was watching TV, and it seems like I kept hearing it. Then I was like, "Oh, so now I keep hearing it," you know, because I was watching a uh, uh, grand, <laughs> yeah, what's that new show? NBC Grand Crew. I think they said it on there, and I was watching yeah, something else. Yeah, and I was like, "Okay, that is what's being said." I wasn't paying any attention to it before, <laughs> but when you think about just in general, old minds versus new minds, I was reading this one article here. And it is about old minds versus new minds. And it was just, just this question. This guy was just saying, this is how the minds think differently. He said, the old mind will think, how do we stop these bad things from happening? But the new mind will think, how do we make things the way that we want them to be? You know, so it's, it's a different way of thinking um, about because they're they're thinking about how to elevate themselves in, in in a situation, and and the old mind is just thinking about overall how can we how can we get to out of this darkness or this bad place, you know that is happening. But I I do see it, I do see it, and I've always been able to bridge between the two. But what are some other things that you all see out there worldwide where you can see that there is just this whole different way of thinking between the old minds and what they deem as the new minds now. I'm going to say this and then get out and get, get, get it over. So for me, the number one thing that I see or that I would say that, that place that in is in the job market, right? In the job market um, for people who own businesses or CEOs or whoever, <clears throat> You have now with, with technology and everything, you got like the 80s babies. And 80s babies are the kind of the hybrids between old school and new school because we were there at the start of technology. So we kind of can, that's why we still, you know, that's why we good with some of the things we, we do with as far as the new technology. I um, mean, if you notice the people before us aren't as savvy with, 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 with technology and we have to show them or the grandkids have to show them how to play, whatever. So in the job market, when you think of a older person, let's just say 80, 80s baby than anybody before that, they're satisfied with or, or when you when you're looking for incentives, how much am I getting paid? What are my benefits and and you know in, in retirement and all of that? Fast forward to the to, to the newer school, they don't care. I'm gonna tell you right now, if, if you pique a young cat's interest. You may have them two years at a job site. 
You mm-hmm. may have them years because they're so busy because they have an entrepreneur mindset now where it, or they like, yo, shit, I can make YouTube or TikTok or whatever. So if you're not, if, if you're not keep maintaining that interest, they're gone. Whereas us, we want security, right? And the people before us, we want security. So it's like, yo, shit, I need a retirement plan. I need to know my, my, my social security. You know what I mean? That, that's the shit that we heard grandma and them talk about. My social security, my, my, my disability, and, and, and all of this. And that's what we talk about. Right? I talk about it now. I'm tired, you know, with disability. Oh, shit, with my disability, check. I'm waiting on it to come in. Right? But now I sound like one of them. But um, the, the question you asked, I just, I see it in the job market. And a lot of the new job markets now, have a older, a older, you know, older employees, and then a younger employees, and then there's a gap that needs to be bridged between the two, because mm-hmm. take two different things or two sets of incentives to keep them both where you need them to be or wh- where they want them to be. Let me let me fix that, where they want them to be. It's basically okay. different, basically different cultures. You have at least three or four different. Um, cultural uh cultures within a workplace because they're different generations so right. now like the baby boomers that are, that are still there but leaving out you have the you know, i'm the millennials they have the generation x millennials generation y and z whatever so it's like four or five different um mm-hmm. cultures within a workforce that have no clue like the, the younger ones have no clue about anything really dealing with um how the older generation uh came mm-hmm. up like the work work ethic um i remember when i worked for the workforce uh, um one of the leaders that she said exactly what you said michael uh except she was like the older generation they they want the security true enough but the younger generation they're looking to advance faster than um than the older generation uh, did and it's not so much about um, them exceeding faster, but they want to be able to go up faster because one, they either have the knowledge, they know about the technology that it's going to take to drive the market the market up faster. They have the know-how, not just the not just the academics or the um, the degrees. They they have that that mindset of how can I make this uh, workplace better? Um, how can I improve it? True for me, it was the same way. Every single job I've been in, been in, the one thing I thought about was, okay, how can I learn my job? I learned my job. How can I make my job better? Okay, now let me apply this job to the overall construct of this of this business. How can I put what I'm doing into bearing this 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 building this 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 business? And the older ones that are there, they hate that. Like they will try to put you in your place real quick. All right. You come in here, you causing it all this real crap. Making all that noise. They think if it's not broke, don't fix it. They think if it's not broke, don't fix it and sit down somewhere. And you see the things that need to be fixed, but they don't want to hear it. So so really, who's who's really old-minded? We think like the older generation will want to fix things and make things better. But we have a newer way of thinking. Uh, and a more innovative way of processing it to do better and be better. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play the devil's advocate here because what I look at the two, I can look at both sides and see an issue, you know, some older, older, uh, old heads not wanting to learn new things, but I also see a young generation. And this is what I used to say about uh, Gen Y, the generation Y, which is the millennials, I would say, and of course, Z too. I, I I really would say that's the microwave age because they're lazy. They want they every they want everything to be popping in the microwave. Click click click. Um, career. You know, I am going to be a star because they found mm-hmm. out that you could do that going on YouTube, going on uh, Instagram. Don't nobody put on the stove, no more. No, don't <laughs> nobody want to cast iron skillets. <laughs> oh, I do. I got them. I do. <laughs> yes. And so what I what I noticed with that microwave age is there's not a lot the learning curve is very, very low. There wasn't mm-hmm. like a lot of learning. And with the, the new planet that is coming, they kind of worry me. Yeah, they'll be able to work uh the um 
the broad range generators, I mean, uh, replicators and all the stuff that is going to be coming uh, to, to this planet. But is there something to be said for the old heads who know the histories of things and know the history of this planet too? Because not all of us have awakened, you know, to know who we were in past lives. And somebody got to live to be able to tell the history of this planet, you know, for the years that have passed, you know, tell something. Everything is not that whole microwave age. And so they kind of worry me just a little bit on the microwave thing. I, I like the fact well, of being innovative and entrepreneurs, but I want them to learn too. You, you right. scammed so, you scammed over the top of my answer, which is old, well, old minds versus new minds. Uh -huh. In my opinion, these kids aren't educated. And when I say educated, I don't mean by the state-issued uh, curriculum. I mean educated at home. We have no uh, clue. We don't have an identity. We don't know who the hell we are. And the gap. America spend billions each year on education. Mm -hmm. And we're the 34th dumbest country in the world. Wow. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I didn't say 34 <laughs> smartest. I said the 34th dumbest. dumbest. <laughs> Everybody wants to be a social media star. Right. And, and the next LeBron James or the next Barry Sanders on the field. We need doctors. Right. We need lawyers. We need politicians. Mm -hmm. And I hope I'm just I'm sidebarring here, but I hope Judge Biden elects the first black uh, judge to the Supreme Court circuit because he promised that. And if he don't do that, then we should take our votes back from his ass. That's just a sidebar. But the, my old <laughs> mind says, and I'm still a young person, but we need to be educated. You know, it's a shame that mm -hmm. there's such a divide in this country across that Mason Dixon that Michael taught me about. Yeah. Where my people, certain people <laughs> don't know that there are black people in these, these ge geographical locations in the United States. Yeah. There are people in my family that don't know that there are black people in Delaware. Mm. But you know, you, you have a point there, Shelton. You have a really hardcore point because with that division, the younger, they don't want to learn the stuff that the older uh, generation knows. Like they don't want to sit down and talk to an older generation person and learn what our real true history is or learn a lot of things like you, like you say, and if everything from mannerisms to how to do anything. Because, you know, old people, they know how to fix anything, all hey. kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. That's because we take so goddamn long to get to the point. Uh, like, <laughs> hey, but I will say this. I will say this because, like I said, I'm always a devil's advocate. And I just, so, right before I retired, I just so happened to be working with a bunch of um, IT folks, right? And a lot of those IT folks were, were young cats. And I learned a lot from them. I did learn a lot from them. So um, I would say that um, uh, I know we, we identified education as far as not necessarily technical education or societal education, but when we start talking about cultural education, that is a little bit different. So I agree with that. But I will say that in the workplace, these young cats solved a lot of old issues because of the people who are in charge are still old minded. So when you start looking at um you know uh process improvement in the workplace and I and we'll 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 kind of, hopefully we'll kind of get off the workplace and get into some of the shit that we really know what we, what we talking about old versus young mind. But well, I just I, I, I just kind of witnessed, I just kind of witnessed that some of these young cats because learning goes up and down, right? And I learned from yeah. my son just as much as I fathered. You know, being a father, I learned from my son, you know what I mean, um, some of his explanations to things or his viewpoints on certain things. So some of these young cats do have plenty to offer to um, assist us in growing as well. But we do have to consider we, we that have, fact. We have, we, have to learn to, we have to learn to be receptive to the younger generation and vice versa, you know. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> right. when, when you have, when we're fighting the media giant that we are, we're fighting the media. It's like what I tell my nephew, he won't get it, Mike, unless young NBA young boy tells him. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> that one right there. Yeah, it's got to be another, another little, yeah. It's got to be right. something. So, so in, when you, in, I think it's just about everybody on here is engaged in the arts of some form, whether it be theater, arts, poetry, 
acting, film, whatever. We, we're engaged in the arts. And we know that that is a broad, being in the arts, you, 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 we're some smart people just to be, even be in, in the arts, period, right? So being in the arts, we have to understand that relativity, or relativity, I don't know what the fuck word I'm trying to say, um, that word, um, being able to relate, let's say that, right? Being right. able to relate um, um, is, it takes you a long way. If you're 60 years old and, and someone is 20, them trying to grasp the concept of where you're from and what you've experienced, you're like 40 years removed. So if a a young person who was raised by grandma and them can convey that message <clears throat> in, in a new school way and then they can grasp it, are we condemning them for not listening to the old person that told them? Or should we be celebrating them for at least understanding, you know, the message? Celebrating, celebrating, because they got that key word, what you said, understanding. And that's what it's all about. As long as you get an understanding, that's we win. Mm -hmm. You know? We okay. are first, first living, of all, in a, living in a three-generational home, it's me, my kids, and my mom. I'm the middle, so I'm always like fighting with either them to try to understand her or fighting with her to get them to, to get her to be empathetic to what they have going on. It's like the, the, the battles that she faced is nothing compared to what well the battles they face is nothing compared to what she had to face. But then vice versa the, the battles she faced is nothing compared to what they have to face too because they have to deal with the, the bullying and the the you know fighting and the and the uh, the homosexuality uh, and those behaviors and stuff at school, they're trying to figure out who they are um, at school, but having all of the the crazy cultural issues that my mom never had to deal with, like it wasn't in her face like that. With my kids, it's in their face. Um, mm -hmm. Having to go to the locker room and boys are, boys are humping on each other just because they feel like it. And it's all fun and games to them. Like, they don't know the difference between <clears throat> boundaries and trying to figure out who they are without someone else trying to tell them who they are. So yeah, right. I have a lot of battles in my home just trying to get each side <clears throat> to understand each other. So, so it sounds like have, sounds like within your home, you're literally the person that's trying to bridge the gap between right. the children. Yeah, yeah. So, right. so, you know, but I know when, a lot of times when people say young versus old minds um, based off of today's society, it all resorts back to, to music, right? And and we say it, hey, man, these, these young cats, the beat good, but I don't understand shit they talking about. They ain't got no substance. You know what I'm saying? Their analysis and their substance ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Did we just have a conversation the other day or was I having it? Maybe I was having it with Rick. And look at the, the older songs. You can play them at a wedding. Most of the songs now that are nice and slow now, they still have these really suggestive lyrics. How the hell <clears throat> are you going to be playing or singing one of these songs at a wedding? I mean, it's just because they, they became products of the man manipulative uh, entertainment music industry who told him you told them you have to have these suggestive lyrics or I ones you to shoot up or sexing up in order to have a successful song. Mm -hmm. if, you know, you get married, if you get married now today, I'm gonna tell you one song that you got to play at your wedding. What's and that? it's Cardi B. Wow. Make See, it drop that's what I'm right there. This is crazy. They don't have it a lot of songs of these artists no. today. That <laughs> I'm being an asshole when I say that. I'm just saying nothing wrong with that young lady song. You know, people jamming. Hell, I made a male version of WAP. Um, but um, uh, but anyway, but no, you're, you're right. You're right. But guess what? Different times, you know what I'm saying, calls for different things. So what was accepted, yeah, I'm, I'm, ooh, I'm finna <clears throat> get back. Different times and different understandings, you know, cause you know um or what's acceptable then and then what's ver versus what's acceptable now mm -hmm. right. this we touched on this and please don't take this the wrong way older generations were 
okay with the fact that a grown ass man could marry a young ass girl based off of when her cycle started. Yeah. That was acceptable at one point in time. Fast forward now, that shit is disgusting and not tolerated. It is in some cultures. That's true. But I'm, I'm yeah, American culture. Let's just say well, culture, <laughs> but um, <laughs> um but y'all get what I'm saying. So um I'm only saying because <laughs> an old head would think that it's cool mm. to to continue that that trend mm-hmm. from from their time. Nowadays, that shit's unacceptable, right. and right. people that will right. despise their grandfather for thinking such a way. Or I their like grandmother. Think, or I their like grandmother. To think of myself as a hybrid. I am uh, I like to think of myself as a hybrid. I have a young mind uh mm-hmm. when it's calls for it, and I also have uh that old with that old wise mind when it calls for it. I can sit down and talk with with the youngsters, I can sit down and talk with the geriatric and get an understanding. Ladies, you baby. You feel me? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm able to do that. Yeah. But ladies, um, the, the thing during my during my journey right now and my spiritual awakening and my spiritual enlightenment, mm-hmm. um I just people so many people are suffering and I suffered for a long time with religion and religion mm-hmm. controlling me. And there's an old song that they sing in my church called Old Time Religion. Well, I don't want that. I don't want what the slave master gave you anymore. It hasn't benefited us at all for believing this for all these generations. And it stops with my black ass. And I'm I'm, I'm at peace with it. I'm at peace with it. You, You know what I mean? Like, there's too much knowledge out here. And too much research about the city of Kemet that I've been exploring and so much black power that this melanin. Let me tell y'all something, mm-hmm. sidebar real quick. An ounce of melanin costs more than an ounce of gold. That's how valuable we are. Mm-hmm. And if our kids don't know this, then we're in a world of trouble. When I get 75, because I'm going to get my years, I know it. When I get that age, Mike, the kids are the future. That's who I got to look forward to taking care of me. Right. Right. You know something? I'm I'm gonna I hate to take it to a, a derogatory place, but you're right about that melanin because that's why kids of color are uh, more valuable in that whole trafficking. Yes, ma'am. Home, yes, ma'am. All right. that is it was a popularity there because of what we have, right. the value that we do have. And that's so sad that we don't know that. Even and in I that derogatory situation, we still don't know. We're at a stuck point. We're at a stuck point because um, so that, 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 that deep Southern religion of how you believe that Jesus say low and humble is the way, but not all the time. There's a time to fight mm-hmm. back sometime. Mm-hmm. Well, here's what we I say. Beyond that point. We're beyond that point. So one of the questions I would have is, when we speak of old mind versus young mind, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and, 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 and depending on what age you are, you're going to side w- with one over the other. <clears throat> I'm asking those who may be favoring one side over the other, where is your middle ground to where you can actually say something positive about the one that you may not necessarily be siding with? You know what my middle human? ground is? Being human is a common yeah. ground. Being human. Yeah. I can agree with at that, but I'll day, take it a step human. further. At the end of the day. I, I'll take it a step further. I, I <clears> say <throat> that there is a lack of education for people in general of who we are, young and old. And I believe that that is going to come out at some point. Like, you know, Shelton said earlier about he's been here before. Yeah, he's been here before. I'm sure his soul has been here many times. And mm-hmm. one people, one thing is, is that people haven't accepted that because the old church ways. I'm tell you to accept nothing like that now. You ain't been here before. Not in the old church ways. You mm-hmm. you come in and when you die, they put you in that dirt and that's it. Right. They understand all the stuff that has happened 
you know, in, in the process of your soul coming here for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. They don't understand none of that. And the biggest thing, this is how I believe we will all come together because there is a whole new life that is coming to uh, this planet. We are the last planet to ascend. What's going to happen is we're going to learn that everything, every single thing that they told us in your life to be the truth was a lie. You can think about almost everything that we were taught coming up and you get and you can see when you tell when you find out some of the truths that are out there that it's all a lie and really soon when we get to this point of ascension and they start bringing the information out there some people are going to be so completely shook and it may be old minds mostly but some <clears throat> young new minds too are going to be the same way because they have lashed on to the programming that has been placed upon them and they believe it to be truth. They have accepted in their mind, body, and soul as being the truth for so many years. It's going to be hard to shake them out of that programming. That's, that's the worst part of it all. And unfortunately, it's the older minds that have received the most programming because they've yeah. been around longer. And they're going to well, be a little bit harder to get out of that. I can say this: with, with, with I've noticed this that with social media, and and I'll say this just, and this is just to give credit to the young minds. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Um, I want to say maybe a year or two ago, you know, I think when some of these social media things kind of start, I think like TikTok, and Instagram, yeah. Instagram for a minute. But do you know when kids started, to, I think I want to say it was when TikTok came about. Do you know that some of these kids were highly upset and are still upset that they're finding out the things that we knew that is just never found its way in the public school system? Do you know they felt cheated because they were not privy sure. to Black Wall Street or Wilmington, mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. the Oh. Wilmington, North Carolina, not Delaware. We think of Wilmington, <laughs> Delaware, but Wilmington, North Carolina, where mm -hmm. black people held seats in in in, in, in like uh you know political uh realms. They had their and, own newspaper, newspaper right? Banks. And, mm -hmm. and, and then black people in, in in that Wilmington, Delaware situation, black people were Republican, and those Republicans mm -hmm. were fighting for certain things. It was yes. the race of white folks that didn't like that that created a <clears throat> a, a coup, if you want, to 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 get them out of seat and then take them out of there, and then um and 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 and, and, and distort the whole thing in New York. Well, you, Michael, Michael, before you go any further, let me say that about the whole Republican thing. We yes, our we our senators and all they were black Republicans. What happened is that. This is what people get mad at me, but you had that whole force of the extreme left liberal white man that came and they, if you look it up, they physically beat them to yes. come to the Democratic Party. That's what I'm they, saying. They, they totally, they totally, if you look up the Wilmington, Delaware, I mean the Wilmington, sorry, Wilmington, North Carolina story, you will see what was and, and, and then what ended up being. And, and for example, Central Park, New York. Central that Park, was yeah. that was from that was predominantly owned by black people, successful right. black people. They got somehow they got you know uh, swindled and scammed out of their land and, and and kicked out. And now you have Central Park. You know what I mean? Like so, and, and, it, man, it's illusions. The lot illusions. It's it's but what all I, this is illusions. It's but what programming, programming. Yeah, yeah illusion programming. A lot of these young folks that we say that you know lack of education and things like that, they they were flabbergasted and they were hurt that they were denied the opportunity to know these things about their culture. So I was one of them. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we say <laughs> first of all, when we say lack of certain things, <clears throat> I, I feel like they want the knowledge. Mm -hmm. are but who was going to teach them other than the old heads? Right, exactly. Right. So right. Want the knowledge, but are, but but are we giving it to them, or are they receiving it? You know what I'm saying from those who are now. 
Somebody said it earlier, media giants. Media giants intervenes, and now the bridge that we're trying to build to fill the gap is distorted. <clears throat> the obstacles yeah. on the bridge blocking the path. So, and you know something, I, the, me the media, let me just say one more thing about that. Uh, you, If you just sit and study it, just listen to it for just a little while. It's always a freaking problem that they're talking about. And it's something that pulls and, and, and destroys your whole, uh, well, it takes away my happy, I'll put it that way. In that programming, there's always a problem. There's always a darkness. And that's what they put people in every day in, in just in general. But every situation that it is for people, a person of color or a person of white, they always have a clash. There's always a clash. And the clash is every day. That's another mind manipulation that they do to us every day. Because there's not many, there's not as many people racist as the media depicts that there is. People don't think about sitting around thinking about race shit all damn day. It's something that is depicted by <clears throat> the media and placed upon us so that you can think about that darkness and that clash all damn day. But it's, it's not propagated that way. It's propagated that way and it's targeted to yes. fuck up your vibrations. Excuse my yes. language. Yes. But when you yes. first wake up in the morning and you turn that news on, if you're mm -hmm. not seeing the weather report, then turn that shit off because you're only going to get them bad vibrations yes, coming yeah. to you. And the first 20 <laughs> minutes when you get out of the bed, that's when you're most vibrant. That's when you're most yes. in tune with your spirit. Turn on some classical mm -hmm. music and get yourself right. Meditate for a minute and then right. take on the day. That's right. yeah. so, absolutely right. This is what I would say, and, 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 I, and I agree with Kimfo, is think about this. For, for at least three hours into your sleep, your uh, astral self Go, t goes on a journey mm -hmm. and when you awaken it's returned so when you wake up from wherever your astral self has taken you you are revived refreshed and replenished and the information that you receive understand everything is vibrations and frequencies we, we can get into right. the science but, but, you know but when you're exposed to certain things upon that that is interrupting your um, vibration or your frequency to what you are receiving. Because you got to think about it. If you're receiving something, then you transmit. You transmit and receive. See, that's how that works, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you're receiving something. So um, that whole, what he was saying, meditating and things like that, mm -hmm. that is something where you should be trying to maintain that current frequency to which you awaken on. You know right. what I mean? Being yeah. I don't know. I told y'all I was I was happy the other day. I looked in a mirror and I saw the crease in my forehead again. And I said, wherever I was, I was wearing my crown. I'm, I'm back to being the queen again, y'all. Wherever I was, <laughs> yeah. I was on my crown. Yeah, I was my crown. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, okay, she's wearing it again. So, so you know, we, we be gone. We be traveling while we sleep, you know? Right. I saw it to bring it back to young versus old minds, um, do we see, like, like, my question is, do we see that as a problem or do we just see that as a <clears throat> thing and then we're trying to, and, and we're trying to navigate, you know what I'm saying, the, um, the distance between the two, like, is that a problem? Is it okay that it exists? And, or, it or, or yes, <clears throat> it's the universe, it bro. It's, mm -hmm. Can I say, it's I say so, it's a so, if so, why? It's a problem. Okay, so think about this. One of the biggest things that we've been programmed to do as a culture, as a black culture, is shut up, be quiet, don't talk about it. What happens at home stays mm -hmm. at home. So there are a lot of bad things that have happened in, in a lot of our lives and in, in, in our parents' lives, in their parents' lives, that you know, from, from rape and molestation and God knows what else has happened. And they kept those secrets. Kept those secrets. It remained quiet. A lot of things happened in the family that is not discussed. And so when it's not discussed, things that we should know as a younger generation, we never find out about until, oh, somebody dies. And then all the secrets come out at the funeral. That's yeah. the only way we, we ever know our history of our family. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a problem because 
we as a younger generation, we don't even know who we come from or why or when just because people that are older generations are not talking. They're not talking mm-hmm. because they've been programmed not to talk. And so now we have to figure out what the hell and, and, and try to create a future based on faulty information or no information at all. Can I say something? So I think if, we can, if we can fix the mind of the older generation to at least understand how they're non talk how they're not talking or not uh, expressing themselves or giving us our history is really going to hold us back you know, in the future. But, but are, are, are the older generation to a certain degree waiting for us to come to ask? You know, because then yes. they would know we're we're, for, we're ready to me, receive that information. I know, I know me, for like, like, I've asked, like, my, I've asked for okay. the past fifteen years questions from my older family members, mm-hmm. and they took those secrets to the grave. You're still like, going to yeah. have people in your family who are not going to want to come out. Still, you're you're right. Mm-hmm. I've seen that definitely. Um, but, Shelton, get me but, your point in there real quick before before, they, before we go on because I have a point too. Shelton, you had a point. I just it's just like like fear is the main thing that's controlling all of this. People are scared to learn mm-hmm. what they don't know, and then it's like mm-hmm. when you drop that bombshell, that's on them, true. They they've been they've been living a certain way for so long. They scared to make that transition and change. But mm-hmm. it's called cognitive it comes cognitive out and affirms it cognitive. or confirms mm-hmm. it, then they more acceptable. They'll accept it if a white man says it. And I don't understand that about our culture. <clears throat> if white people validate it, oh, it must be real. But if I hey, if someone religious, if, if we if someone if religious we come, says it, they'll believe it. Huh? It's called the Willie Lynch syndrome. <laughs> that's a whole that's a book y'all need to read. The Willie Lynch yeah. book, yeah. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you, real quick, real quick, Margot, she was speaking, and I think she kind of got, uh, she, she graced uh, someone else to allow them to finish, but I don't think she was finishing her thought. Oh, on that was more so, um, I think it's to being aware of ourself enough to start to pick up on pieces of information. If we are given mm-hmm. some or if we are not, but then that has to when you um, awaken to your spiritual being and just stuff that you just want to know where you're out there going, seeking and searching on your own, um, mm-hmm. you will gain some um, clue about what's going on with your family history or this, that and the other once you start doing a, a, a in-depth search. Um, even with that, I think that depending upon how our families are made and how we grew up and how you developed over time, um, we start asking better questions. We start um, giving information to to those um, beneath us, like to our children and passing on the good stuff versus the, the negative or the bad stuff. So, um, me being somebody that's kind of in between the gap, but also I say for my mom, because she's starting to be to where she is sharing more. And I, I guess even though our family had been bits and pieces and in shambles, we still were operating out of that that part of love and, and not really caring, like, will this hurt you or will this help you? Regardless, if it hurts you some, it w- we need you to know this because we want to help you and to definitely um, charge and push this family out of this situation and, and give you a better future. So um, uh-huh. I think for I a, us- I have a point where I, I feel like if, if I'm gonna wrap this all in one, I have to make this point. I said it before, people don't hear it. They don't hear me because they don't see it yet. There is coming, there is a time and it's coming very soon. The old generation is going to be necessary and needed. Because mm-hmm. somebody's going to have to explain to young folk why are certain things happening. Like most people, I'm, I'm going to use an example. I'm just going to use this country as an example right here. Most people don't know that once upon a time we were a republic. Years ago, we were a republic. Okay, we're one again, it's behind the scenes. But when they bring it out, 
then you're going to know all these different things. I mentioned earlier tonight, I said the IRS was a private company. I said the Federal Reserve was a private company. The, all this information that comes out all the time that we learn, you're going to need people who know this type of stuff, older people who know this type of stuff, because the young folks, they a lot of them haven't taken the time to slow down and learn that kind of thing. So we're gonna, that's how I believe we're gonna bridge together because we're gonna have to lean on one another a whole lot more when all of the truths of this planet comes out and people are gonna be disillusioned because everything that they were taught in the programming, they're gonna find out it wasn't real. And, and that's one of the things I was gonna say, like, we, we go into the young young mind versus old mind, but you cannot fault them for a society that intentionally changed what they now know. Yeah. From the old truths to the new falsehoods, right? You can't blame them for what they didn't get. For the for example, you know the maps. As far as them being um, altered in size and scope for different countries, because bigger equals better. We all know that Africa is the largest continent on this earth, but if you look at a map, Africa is one of the smallest ones. You see what I'm saying? Um, the whole difference between being above the uh, equator and below the equator, because right. we took look at north being, you know, anything that's up is up and anything that's down is down and, and up being relevant and down being non-relevant, right? So you yeah. know, we, we can't necessarily <laughs> fault them for that. I, I'm telling you, shit gets deep, man. Shit gets deep. But oh, we, we can necessarily... fault them because they did a lot of that stuff on the, they did, they did the mind screw on purpose. Right. So while I have it, I just wanted to say this. Have we noticed that with the younger folks, and then this is one of the differences. And this is one of the things that I say that is a good thing for the young minds. See, back then, you know, we were not taught emotion, how to deal with emotion, how to express emotion. Have you noticed now that a lot of songs, a lot of media um, allows or, or, or the young folks are now talking about their depression, their emotional woes? and medication that they're taking for their emotional woes. It's okay to me. So take now to talk about those things. And that's one thing that I will say that is a little bit different um, that, I, um, that I praise um, because my generation and, and those before that, we don't cry. We don't, we, 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 we you know, men, we, we, we don't do emotions. You know, we, we live inside of what they call a man box. You see what I'm saying? And now, a lot of these youngsters, when they express themselves through their through their artistry, music, uh, or whatever, they talk about their woes and they express their depressions and and, and ADHD and, and and whatever it is they have in the like medication. It. You know what I'm saying? I, I I said that because I see it now. I noticed. I know at one point, no one ever rapped about that shit. Oh, no but one let ever. You, let me tell you one, one thing about that, though. That is a double-edged sword there. And you're right. If we look at it in an everyday sense, like you're looking at it in an everyday sense, it is, it is a good thing that people are coming out with true emotions. But in right. a music industry sense, that is a double-edged sword because that is a way of, let's see how I explain this without going too far into loosh. There's something, okay, it's called loosh. It's, it's what the dark ones feed off. Uh, the your dark Dracos, your your dark your your dark nobility. Um, they you. feed off the, the the depressions and the the downside of what we give off as humanoids. So if they can put that out there into the world in a song, because you know they control all the music industry, um, yeah. the music industry prays to their those false gods, and so if they can put that out there and they can bring you to places where. You not only expressing your emotion, but you're expressing your dark emotions. They get to feed off that loosh at the same time. So it's a double-edged sword in there, uh, the manipulation that they do. But I understand in an everyday sense, what you're saying, it makes absolute sense. Right. But when you're talking about from, growth and personal healing or in personal dealing, 
then then yes, because you know there's some people, and like I shared with you, uh, I believe it was yesterday. You know, what I'm saying holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person, like you drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You, you know were saying I mean? all that yesterday, and I was still wanting to pick up this computer and just crash into the ground. And he was saying, he was just saying all these wonderful things, and I, I should have been yes, yeah, yeah, that's so, that's right. So let me say this. I wanted to pick up the whole desk. Right. So let me say this. Those are not my words that I just used. I, I literally found that on Instagram on a meme, and it was one of those spiritual spirituality uh, pages. So I just do want to give credit, or at least say that it's not my words. But um, it was one of those things, and I and I, when I looked at that, it resonated with me specifically because I'm one of them people who who tend to hold on to some shit. You know what I mean? And when I thought about it, I was like, well, fuck, you know, like me holding on to this anger. Like they said, it's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Well, shit, I'm just killing myself. So, you know, and uh, I'm not at that point to where I, you know, I want to, you know, take my own life. I feel like I got plenty more years. And as Ken folks said, he need, we we, we going to get them years in, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, Mike, I've, I've actually come to a place, man, right now on my journey, man, where... I'm very mindful of what I allow to uh, get me emotionally into it. Uh, I just take a step back and 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 look at the other person and 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 think for one second. I don't know what this person is going through, and they may be trying to project whatever they're going through onto me. So I take a step back and 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 think about how I'm going to uh, respond to the to whoever this, this person may be. But um, I. I think that's what we should all do a lot more. We self check. We may not be able to control the situations that we're in, but we can control ourselves. And I think that's uh I think that's and, what we a lot of people should practice, man. You know, but that um, that type of mindset is 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 why the bridge in the gap needs to exist. Because when we start talking about old minds versus young minds. If you're an old mind and you find a problem with the young mind, what solutions are you offering? And if you're a young mind finding problems with an old mind, how are you trying to provide solutions for that issue itself? You know what I'm saying? So one of the things that's missing <clears throat> is that the, the, the in-between or the go-between. I, th- I believe, uh, Bridget, you kind of said that earlier as far as your whole your household itself, the house that you're living in right now, your mother, yourself, and then the kids. You know, that's a perfect example of the um the array of 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 I call it I'm gonna call it chaos that kind of goes on within the house. You know what I mean? Um because you know, whenever we talk and turn them loose business, I, I hear your mama and and I hear the kids, and then I hear you too. Um, <laughs> oh, it, it, you know. <laughs> yeah, so so it, it is it does exist, but I would just say if we find if 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 you're an old mind and you find that there's an issue, something that you do not like, um, for those old minds that don't like something, what are you doing to provide a fix? You have to, we have to be a living example, bro. Like, I'm, you can talk to somebody today to your face turn blue, but if you're doing it in front of them and you're showing them the way, it's going to be hard to refute what you're telling yeah. them behind that. You see what I'm saying? That's why Action. I stopped talking to people. I stopped talking to people and said, you know what? If you got eyes to see, you're going to see it. Yeah. Now watch me not work. Just that, not just that, but being, <laughs> being compassionate and empathetic. So <laughs> we we just we have to work on being a living example, letting our little light mm-hmm. shine. You know, you from mm-hmm. church, you, you went to church with me. You know, we gonna let our yeah. little light shine, bro. <laughs> you know? And so I guess if if we start to get to a point of wrapping it and we uh, wrapping this up. Um, if we went around and everybody did kind of give their, I'll start with you, Michael, this was your, your topic. And first I'm going to ask you, are you resolved between your club and lounge? And then I want to know from there, uh, how you feel when it comes to old minds versus new minds. You know, so, um, 
to kind of wrap that up, man, um, the whole club versus lounge thing, I totally understand that. I'm a lounge person myself nowadays. You know what I mean? Um, uh, are there times where I think I still got it? You know what I'm saying? Yes, but I think, that can be, I, I, I think that can be done in the lounge. Now, if I do go to the club, now, you know, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm going to rub my head and do the south side. I'm going to dug in. I'm going to hang wang with it. It might still be old. Um, but, but but that's that. Um, in reference to um, what we discussed earlier as far as the workforce, life, cultural, things like that, you know, I advocate for my people. You know what I'm saying? I do believe that my purpose is, is, is greater beyond, you know, any artistry that I may be involved in now. Um I feel like I just have to really sit back and think um, knowing what's out there and knowing what I have to say, I, I really have to kind of balance. Am I, am I ready to die? Cause I know the type of shit that I'm going to talk about. I, I will be a target. So um, um, that that's kind of a, a, a personal thing and we'll get off the dark side for a minute with that. Um, but like we were just talking about now, it's, it's, like they tell you in any place of business, hey, don't come, don't bring us, don't don't just bring us problems without a solution. So if we find something or we see something that we dislike or that we don't agree with or that we find it makes an issue, then what are we, what are we doing about it? Um, you know, what resolve are we bringing about to to fix and or be agents of change for those dislikes that we may have? Um, when it comes, uh, you know, between young and old minds. And, and, and that's that, that's my thing. And, um, you know, I try to do my part as far as, you know, communication and, and, and sharing and knowledge and stuff like that. Um, but I'm just a single entity. You know what I mean? And um, I think in order to reach the masses, it will take a collective effort. That's it. Okay. All right, thank I'll you, second Michael. that on the collective effort. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, Bridget, let me just see how you feel on, as, as we wrap here on the uh, old minds and versus new minds. What point would you like to leave us with of how it is and where you think it's going to go and just your take on things in general? Um, just like I said before, being in a multi-generational home, um, I learn from both my mom and my kids every day. Uh, never fails. Whether the lesson I learn makes me cry, makes me happy, makes me sad, makes me reflective, I'm learning something. So mm -hmm. I believe you have to be be willing to 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 just learn. Like you have to be willing to open open yourself up to learn whatever it is that somebody else is trying to teach you. Um, like for my mom, with her being. The, the oldest one in the house, she's closed off to a lot of stuff. Um, she's shut down on a lot of things when it comes down to spirituality, a religion, um, education, like just everything in general. She knows she knows her way and her way works. Um, there's a lot of things I can say she's grown up with that has made her feel the way that she feels. And so what I've learned is that people in the older generations, the baby boomer generations, they've had to harden and harden themselves so much just to be able to get to the day and hold their head up with pride and say, you know, I am who I am, regardless of what has happened, I am who I am. So they're not really willing to change because they've been who they are for so long, who they were made mm -hmm. to be for so long. For me, I know I can change year to year day to day, start over, try to become better, try to become new. And that's just who, who I am. For my kids, they don't know A to Z just because they haven't been exposed to the real like my mom has been exposed to. They haven't been exposed to what I've been exposed to. And so for them, they're wanting to learn, but they don't have the, the, um, Wherewithal. what is it called? They really don't have the, the, the uh, the mindset to just try to try to understand where my mom has been, so just because they haven't had to, they haven't been forced to they haven't put in their that situation and me spoiling them, I try to cater to everything that they have going on. So it's my fault that 
it is my fault that the, the, the structure that they need to understand my mom is not there. Just because I know the things that I, I, I lacked as a child and growing up, I try to provide that with, to them now. So because of that, they're, they're exposed to things that they didn't have to be you know, with phones. If I didn't buy them phones, a lot of stuff they wouldn't be exposed to. They would have to get it out the mud just like I did and my mom did. But um, they are a lot more spoiled than I was and she was. And so that creates a barrier as well. So um, I believe just trying to understand who they are, who they're trying to be, my mom trying to understand who they are, who they're trying to be, and then vice versa. My kids trying to understand the older generation and what they had to go through just so that they can have the opportunities that they have now. I think that's really what it's going to take. Like you say, education, learning, compassion, empathy. Um, I, I, will say, I will say that those kids are lucky to be able to live in a home with grandma yeah. because they get to learn mom's way. They get to learn their way, mom's ways, and see and learn grandma's way. So I think when they become adults, they will be more equipped. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To, to uh, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but that's a good thing, man. Good shit. That's, that's a good, good. That's good. Yeah. That's cool. Well, thank you, Bridget, Lady B. We know before we go to Shelton, I want to get Shelton's wrap on the, the view, but um, Veronica. Hit us with her. She says, my turn. She says, all I want to say is <laughs> listen to your elders. Listen to the wisdom that they are giving you. It's very knowledgeable. So she put her two cents in here. We see you next week, Ron. <laughs> so, hey, hey, man, Veronica. Yes, Tell ma'am. her the two cents was received, and it helped us get what we needed out the stove with the tax. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shelton, come on through with your your rap on the old minds versus the new minds um, and what you feel. For old minds and young minds alike, I am a, I got a straddle the fence on this one. I can't uh I can't say that the old heads do have wisdom, but it's a lot of uh a lot of things, ways that they have that uh I think shouldn't be passed down to the younger generation. Uh, fear is one of those things that uh, has been passed down generation to generation to generation. Uh, we teach our kids. Well, I know I was taught to be in a box and to pray about everything and Jesus was going to take care of it. And it took me a long time to actually be able to shake that off and realize that I'm more I'm more powerful than praying about it. You know what I mean? I can get more done myself than just sitting around praying about it. But I myself um in my reading i've learned that uh concern for children which we seem to all have here concern for children is the measure of a nation and an individual uh Mm -hmm. so that says it all in itself man we need to educate these kids Mm -hmm. um and not with what we was taught in school because we know that christopher columbus didn't discover america we know this (laughs) and we know a whole bunch of other lies that they've told us to be, un, you know, untrue. So we need to educate our own kids. Um, I don't think public school is the way to do it, but that's what we have to deal with now. We don't have enough people that are in legislative positions to be able to change things for us in public schools. But if we take our kids out of athletics, which generate the most money in these public schools, then we we, we might win something because we're messing with the bottom line and that's, that's money. So that's my take on it. I think the old heads should definitely um, pass down the wisdom and, and 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 encourage the kids to think outside the box and not be so closed-minded. You know, Elon mm-hmm. Musk just put his private uh, plane in space. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not enough black kids trying to aspire to do things like that because they aspire to be a basketball player playing the game right. though that game can provide generational wealth if you injure yourself then you know you're done but mm-hmm. you it's hard to injure your mind mm-hmm. unless you're programmed or doing some drugs intentionally to <laughs> end your mind so <laughs> that's my take on it man i don't want to 
you know, I'm long winded. So that's my take on it. All right. Well, thank you, Shelton. And thank you for being here also. Oh, Mark, go, go, go. What do you, what do you have on your wrap for tonight's subject? Old minds versus new uh, minds. Yeah. Old minds versus new minds. I think um, in trying to find a common ground to where you can link the two is to start with operating out of love. Find an aspect or, or a place where something about that person that you love, whether they're young or old, and come to be able to connect and understand each other for a moment. Be present in that moment right then and there and um, speak on what y'all both know to, to start to share and that way uh, you can develop a whole conversation and start picking up on um, bits of history, bits of, well, I know this and we used to do this, this, this way. Now this is the new way that the youngsters do it now and trying to find that um, and, and gain that from each other. Um, there's a lot of things that we used to believe in, in, in the black culture and, and families and things like that. Um, it used to disturb me when I look at it now with me being my age, but I know that I'm not going to be one that's going to pass on those type of lies to my children. So there's lots of things that they know the truth about. There's lots of things that I want them to be aware about, whether it's something that might um, boggle their mind or, um, <clears throat> you know, might hurt for a little bit, but you need to know this. This is what you need to know. You may not understand it, but this is what you need to know. And so to continue to pass that down. Um, but yeah, the, the stuff in the past, let that be in the past, unless there's history that's going to help promote and shoot and push the youngster to uh, to really better our future and take care of the, the older folks, which I'll be in that category later down the line. I was like, I ain't but 41, but, you know. Just keep we living, gotta, baby. Keep living. Yeah, we got to look for these younger folks to be able to take care of us and watch out for us and to um, use better judgment with these issues when it comes to, you know, like those, like Mike said, them uh, them social security checks and all them other stuff. <laughs> like, what, what? we, we got to look for these youngsters to uh, take care of us. So. Mm -hmm. right. Mike, about. you got a point? They, they, can't, put they in can't take care of us if we don't teach them how to. Yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. We gotta, so, yeah, get on top of that. So I, I, I will say this: that um, a lot of these youngsters are willing to receive, but it's a bunch of, and I'll say us, because I, I was guilty of it with my son, um, and my son is 20, um, not thinking that he's ready. Yeah. No, I, 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 I so, don't think it. That because we feel like we at least it, at least within the home at least for me and within the home I felt like he's not ready and we think they're not ready but these kids are exposed to so much in the in the information age in the digital age. they're exposed to so much and they know a whole lot more than what we think they know. Oh, just yeah. think about, just think about all the shit that you did that your parents didn't know about. Now think of the world. With fucking cell phones and the information that they're exposed to, mm. and them knowing they, too much, yeah, and them knowing okay. way too much. So I think a lot of times we don't give the kids or the or the kids, the younger generation credit, and yeah. then we think, oh, yeah, y'all don't know nothing about that. Under remember that y'all don't know nothing about that. Well, she is. How you know? We do that a lot. All right, or oh, you ain't ready for that. You ain't ready for that. I've been mm -hmm. ready. You know what I'm <laughs> I feel like, like when y'all talking about what is happening within the home and then trying to get answers and then the parents not sharing because they don't know if it'll hurt or hinder you. Well, you don't know that. But don't keep that away from me. Give right. Me that. Put Give that truth out there. Right. Give me that. And then mm -hmm. I will decide how it hurts or helps me. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's one of the things that... Um, us, us older cats should kind of get out of thinking that we're sparing someone something when they may really be ready for it. So the only thing you can do is give the <laughs> give the information and then you know let them deal with it how they may 
And if it needs clarity, I feel like they're wise enough to come back and have clarity. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, you know, first of all, before I get my take, Veronica also says she would rather that the young people hear from her than in the streets. So that's Veronica's take. I had to practice that in my kids when I uh, got a divorce. So there were some things that that happened in, uh, in our relationship that I knew my kids would eventually find out. But mm-hmm. I didn't want them to find out in a way that was like manipulative or um, tried to force me to do or be something that I didn't want to do or be. So passing mm-hmm. that information on to them, I did it in the most loving manner that I possibly could. And I say to this day, they're grateful for it just because mm-hmm. they know that even though the information did hurt them in the beginning, now they can see it through, through clear eyes uh, and know, mm-hmm. okay, so well, it was like this and like this and like that. So now I understand why, you know, things are the way they are. Because okay. what you laughing I'm, about? Hey, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but the only reason I'm laughing is because I can only imagine a black person trying to tell their kids some shit like that. Like, hey, now y'all gonna hear some shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd rather you know, hear from somebody else. Now look here, let me tell you about something like that. Like oh your mama or whatever. Like, you know, like <laughs> that's why I'm like, I'm, only, I'm sorry. I'm only playing how I know I know my mama. And if anybody met my mama, you know it, it, it ain't ain't shit coming out of life. Let me tell you that now. Like <laughs> yeah. at all. <laughs> Those are some hard conversations to have. With. It, it, it's good to, and I think it, mature, it matures them in a way where they they know that okay, Mama trusts me enough with this information to be able to process it the right way, where she knows I'm not gonna flip out or she's she's at least giving me the chance to express how I feel. And that's the thing: if you're going to pass information on to kids, so that you no, know, you have to make sure that. Um, you give them the space to express themselves. You can't just, you know, drop a bomb on them and then say, "Hey, don't react." Like and this isn't a blind react on TikTok. You have to give them a chance to to express how they're feeling with the information that you've given them. If they and understand, pass and us, think, whatever, and understand, give them that yeah, space. and understand that that may be that may come back to them asking you some questions. You see what I'm saying? So, okay. yeah. But if we if we going to if we're going to tell these kids the truth, and Miss Tanya, I'm going to be brief. Look, mm-hmm. if we're going to tell these kids the truth, we got to do it all the way. You can't give them a, a white lie, even that Santa Claus is real. It goes exactly. that oh. you can't keep brain, exactly. you can't brainwash these kids to believe that a white man, a jolly white man, is bringing them these gifts that you work hard for. My kids it knew the truth from the very if beginning. Gonna Ain't the no cycle, Santa Claus. We're going to break the cycle of brainwashing these kids. We gotta stop it. Ain't no fairy, you know, Easter Bunny. My kids knew the truth from the beginning. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) But I never believed in uh, Santa Claus and all that. Not not because of just the, the political side of it. It's the fact that I was there when they were shopping. And I was like, for that. That and we knew we used to go look for the toys. Me and my sister, we find them, and they were in the closet and stuff. But like, there wasn't no man coming up in there. My daddy, that was dead. My toys you know, was so on they... layaway. My toys hey. was on layaway, so I knew we was. I knew where it came right. from. And right. you tell me, hey, look here. I know I was raised my grand. I know my grand had a gun in every room in the house. <laughs> And and number two, we live in a trailer home. We had no goddamn chimney. How them mother got? How them motherfucking get to get in there? That's the that's that's no right. right. <laughs> right. Yes, because we. I, I mean, we just, just have, have a totally I'm different. Like God coming down any chimney, open up the door, whatever. You call the cops. Hey, come get me something. Right. Our lives are always different. 
you know, our logic as a people was always different. But you know, I'm, I'm going to say my, my, my say my take right now so we can get start to wrap and get out of here. Because I know we get to talking sometime or we and it goes on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> and what I have decided I have seen as I've been downloading a lot of these shows, these damn shows be three or four hours these days if I saw lately. I'm like, oh my God. What about the night when we did a four-hour show and then we stayed on all damn night or the hell the after show? I see. Look, we had a whole DJ and everything. You know what I'm <laughs> it was on the chain, but I just said, "Whoa, that's a lot for the live portion." But oh, as far man. as what I think on the whole subject matter, I mean, I have lived in the gray area for a lot of years. I lived in a gray area because I always related to the young people. Because as a person who I've never been married and I don't have kids, and I worked in the entertainment industry for over thirty years, so I was always I knew the rap songs, but then the young kids because I had to know all the words. I was a programmer. I had to know the music. But you better know them damn words to that song before you put it out there and get your ass in the clinch because of the FCC. So I knew the words before YouTube and all that would give you the lyric videos and you learn the words and everything. So I always lived in the gray. I always was between the generations, the old minds and the new minds. I can relate to both. I can relate to the young because I was always in their industry doing their, doing their stuff. I was sitting with the Queen Latifahs and the, the Diddies and, and the people like that who they were idolizing. But I could also relate to the old because the older people, they understand the stuff that I know, too, about, you know, we are a republic again. And, you know, what is happening with, with the country? What's happening behind the scenes? You know, what has torn up our country for so many years? You know, what it means to be... Uh, what it means to be if you decide that you want to be a patriot, what that really means, and not what the far right says and not what the far left says. I understand all that by talking to my older generation as well and the true history of our people, not just the stuff that they tell us that sounds good. Don't tell me nothing about no damn talent and no mess like that because I'm going to go under the cover and tell you where that shit came from, okay? So we know the real history of the real stuff that went down. And so that's, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So the thing is, this is, a, this is how we're going to bridge the gap. Like I said it all night, I truly believe as this planet ascends, because we are on the verge of ascension, and we are on the verge of a lot of stuff that is, is uh, coming out. I think that the generations of, uh, I'll say the old minds, are going to need the new minds to explain all the technologies, everything that's coming. They're not going to know how to use no broad range at replicator. They're not going to know how to, to do anti uh, anti graphitic scooters because we're going to be able to get to London in 15 seconds in a few moments. I mean, a lot of the people who are on the older, they're not going to, they think, I, I heard a question the other night and it was, it was a valid question, but they, they, they said, how do we stop, uh, keep from bumping into one another in the air? Well, there's no space. So therefore, all this stuff that's coming, the older generation's like, the hell? They can't figure that out. But the newer, the younger generation, the new mind is going to get that pretty easily. We're going to need one another. All the technologies, all the new stuff that's coming. But the, the old minds are going to need the, the young minds too when the truths come out of some of the dark stuff and the programming that has happened. These generations well, Tanya, have to lean on one another. Yes. Miss <laughs> Tanya, it's, 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 it's bad for us as a black culture because our kids aren't the ones that are coming up with the technology. These are the Chinese kids that are that are uh, that are, are and foreign kids. African American kids mm -hmm. are in last place when it comes to uh, education. And at home, we're not teaching them mm -hmm. economics and things that are actually going to help them in this crazy mm -hmm. world that we live in. Right, but I'm telling you what's getting ready to happen though. All of that's going to change. I'm going to tell you how it's going to change. When uh, I, I don't know if I can talk about it on the air and tell you how the money is going to be, but when we hit our time where uh, they're going to give more money, flood more money into our uh, planet. So you will go from working a lot of jobs that you have to for money, working for a living, working to live, working to live, working to live into doing stuff that you more so want to do in life. What is, what is Michael doing? 
It's a theme song for what oh, y'all saying. Y'all. Make a change, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, there's going to be there's, there's going to be that change, and when that happens, it's going to be up to a lot of Michael. Something what I'm talking. <laughs> it's going to be up to a lot of folks like us as these entrepreneurs to flood more money into black communities into black projects so that our kids too can have the ability to create we're going to have to put that behind it we're going to put the wind beneath those wings ourselves Mm -hmm. to help our folks to create so that we can too be in that red race and that's going to definitely happen michael okay you heard what you're saying (laughs) It brought up the song by Hero. First, you hear the middle of my dissertation. <laughs> but, but I mean, that is something because that is a re- really, really valid, relevant point. And I know I can speak for myself with my Serenity Foundation. That's the kind of stuff that I would love to do too, is put more funding behind those kind of projects because yes we need to be there too we need to be as competitive as anybody else in the world and we can we'll have our our companies as adults but we need to make sure our kids get there too another thing that you said earlier shelton the school system you know there's a lot of problems there some people are suggesting taking the kids back home um because there's been a lot of issues that nobody's known about nobody has understood what yearbooks and all that was for yearbooks was really as a means of them looking at the children to see that they wanted to abduct it was never for you to have your pretty picture in a book so that you and your friends could share it the yearbooks was a log of children so that they could see the children that they wanted to abduct so as we go forward here we and these whole thing changes with educational systems we'll have a decision that we have to make do we have to create more private institutions ourselves which is a great idea or do we just go ahead and educate our kids at home that means that some of the parents are going to have to step up a little bit so that's that's a decision that's going to have to be made so. <laughs> that's a lot of pra- parents struggling during the, during the uh, in the, in, the industrial age, in the industrial age where you have to work to survive, you can see you can teach your kids at home, but if your ass at work, who teaching your kids anything? Right. Well, the thing is, remember I said as they flood the, the, the world, the planet with more money, you can adjust yourself a little bit more. You might can have one parent home, one at work mm-hmm. and a flip around, or you might have less hours at work. You might be working a four hour day at, uh, at work. Now, I, I know having enough money in Germany and in New Zealand, they did that mm-hmm. test and they found out that within a four hour time frame, the workers were able to be so much more productive right there you go time frame than they did in a whole eight hours that's right because this this was an elite thing this was an elite corporation thing that made you work for eight to ten or plus more hours it was just it's a slave machine and we're going to be leaving that slave machine so as we walk out of that slave machine we got to change our mentality and we got to bring our kids and all along with us of the things that we need to teach them to motivate them to be large within our communities because we're going to be about communities and not big governments and all that stuff anymore too so there's a lot that's getting ready to happen we're on the verge on the verge, so y'all, y'all stay. I look, I'll be glad when this year Harry up and happy. I know, right? I know, right? Because I'm always saying y'all be ready, but it's just on no, the verge. It's not just you. I mean, like you know, we 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 hear, you know, um, you make it personal. You you make it something to like, ooh, like I know somebody who, mm-hmm. who you know. So, um, but it's one of them things. That I don't know what the delay is. But uh, oh, if it's coming, I can tell you the delay is that when you're changing over a whole world and you're taking it away for people who ran it for a certain amount of time and ran it their way and controlled all of us, naturally they're looking and saying, We're not giving it up, we'll blow up the whole thing before we let it go. So they made attempts, 
but they have weakened them so much so they can't do the things that they used to do. So they're slowly going behind the scenes. And when right. you think you hear earthquakes, you don't hear earthquakes. You they going down there blowing stuff up. Yeah. They yeah. going, they getting them. They're getting them left and right. Because remember, I told you there's different things beneath the surface. There's whole different communities, <laughs> this oceans, the everything's down there. And we ain't gonna, we never talk, about we ain't gonna talk about that, Eddie. Yeah, you know, but, I don't know how many we got. You mean you say some shit like that? They may just next thing you know, you got static electricity and, and electricity. Right. Electric, I went, I checked, and I, I was making sure I was still in the green that I didn't get my monetization dropped <laughs> and all that. So I did go look. I did check it out earlier. So I better get my tail out of here. So I tell you what, we are going to break, and we'll come back and say our goodbyes in just a second. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. I think my Michael wanted to sing whole songs during my my little time I was talking. He wanted to sing whole songs. I was trying to do background, background music because what you said had suffered, and I just thought of the perfect song to go along with what you were saying. That was my error. I guess, but see, we couldn't make out what you were saying. Exactly. That's how it sounded. Yeah, uh, 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 each moment uh, uh, you tried uh, to uh, say a word, uh, there he go. Yeah, each moment you were saying a word, there he go with something. Yeah. Come in close and dreaming at the camera. Yeah. Every I, I guarantee you, if you speak twenty words within those twenty words, there's there's a song that has those exact words in it. Oh yeah, I, I believe that. I believe that. So, well, you know, y'all, it's about time for us to get on out of here because we did hit that three hour mark. I was really trying to get under that today, but you know, the conversation was good and we were in it. So, you know, we uh, I'm just gonna ask y'all real quick what y'all got going on, I, and we won't do the long ones, you know, because. Sometimes we get really long when we're going around. Just, just tell me what's happening this week. I'm just y'all just go at one time. What you got? I go week? first. Whoever wants to talk, talk. Okay. <laughs> I got. I go first. I ain't got nothing. <laughs> just relaxing, <laughs> just relaxing and chilling and eating and doing whatever it is, and gonna have a boatload of gummy worms in a minute. But Ooh, nothing. I, got. <laughs> I love gummy worms. As I say it with my, my tooth hurting me right now. <laughs> yeah, so I can't have no gummy worms, that's for sure. Oh, but I, I like any of the gummy stuff. Well, I haven't had as much of it when I since I uh they were talking about how they make it, but <laughs> we're not gonna go oh. there. <laughs> we ain't yeah, going don't, there. don't spoil it for me. <laughs> yes. So what else y'all what else y'all got going on this week? Bridget, what you got going? Uh me, work. Kids, school, and turn them loose. All right. <laughs> there you go. Turn them loose. What you got going? She, uh, school, uh, <laughs> school, get, 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 um, get this certification out the way with school. Um, and then uh, I'll probably be in the lab coming up with, 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 with some type of either, uh, poem, um, or some type of music. But other than that, man, it's, it's just, you know, taking it easy, um, trying to catch up on sleep, to be honest with you. I, I tend to stay up for days at a time. So just trying to catch up on sleep. Um, I, you know, I got to try to maintain this, this baby face. Um, but, yeah, man, just really school, man. Just trying to get this, um, these executive leadership courses out the way, man, and, and, and add some credentials behind um, our um concept with the whole turn them loose movement and 
you know, that's that's pretty much it. Just trying to uh, build a brand, man, and, and make sure that, that we, uh, whenever we do get started, that we off on the right foot. All righty then. Well, y'all, my I think my whole time that I have coming is to straighten out my computer so I can bring the new look to you all here for our Imitates Life. And then I got a lot of other stuff that's going on from client work to moving to just a lot of stuff. So being on the show has helped me to take my brand away from that for a little while. But, you know, of course, it comes seeping on back in. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to run my social media. Here we go. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode of Our Imitates Live with Tanya Dixon. So be sure to like and subscribe. And also check us out on all of our other social media. You know, sometimes because when we're being on break, I forget the things. I forget all the protocol uh, that I do. I had to le- relearn my protocol. And I, I'm going to just go ahead and tell you all now, I don't know what credits I'm about to run, but I'm going to run some credits. And I don't know what names are in this mug. So, <laughs> so we go, whatever is going to be on there tonight, we're going to be like, mm-hmm. Nobody going to get the credit. Yeah, somebody go get some credit. Because I have no idea what is in these doggo credits that I can't look. What's this in there? I can't really look at it. But uh, uh, next week, it'll be different. Because <laughs> I'll make sure that I go through all that. I'll be back on track. It was just good getting in here tonight and knowing that my computer wouldn't crash. Because that was the whole thing. Like I said, I didn't get. I had to kill 70 gigs to make sure that I could have a smooth show tonight. And you notice I didn't break down too much either, did I? Like no. my, my internet didn't break and everything. So maybe you're, that was some the problem not, too. Yeah. So I'm gonna continue to try to clear gigs off my computer so that we can have smooth sailing. But I've enjoyed you all here tonight. This was a solid group, you know, and it was solid conversations. Y'all were on it. You know, we lost Shelton a few moments ago. And so thank thank him again, Mike, for uh, coming in. Yeah, no problem. I will say that um, he, when I when he, when he say up in the mountains, he is not bullshitting. His ass is up in no man's land in the mountains. So uh, wow. yeah, so so to, to, wow. to, for him to have stayed on as long as he could or chime in when he could, that's that's a success because I know that weather up there. Is bad because the weather where I'm at is bad. So I know I know damn well in the mountains first. So, but anyway. Oh man, well we thank him for the time that he could give to us. We really appreciate it a lot. Thank you, Bridget, for being here, and of course uh, my my homie downs, which is Mike, Mike, and Marco. <laughs> so thank y'all for holding me down. Rock, rock. Thank you for being on on uh, Veronica. She's in from the chat. Yeah, Veronica, the, it's the, the message. She she was in chat to instant messenger to my text. She I, she want all of it tonight. <laughs> so, you, you want it, girl? You want it? <laughs> she gonna add her two cents. Right? She gonna add her two cents, and it's gonna add to the total. Damn it! You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, so we, she was in there. So hopefully she'll get all her internet straight, and she can get in here with us next week, and we can we can do the damn thing. But thank you all again for being here. Love the conversation. Hopefully it was helpful to you all out there. Uh, you know, of course we'll be back next week with another interesting topic, and join us and and join in for the chat. Or you know, if you have more to say than that, then maybe we'll bring you on the show at some point. Also, if you want to be a guest on the show, make sure that you hit me at info at Tandyland. It's T-A-N-D-I-L-A-N-D dot com. Or if you want to do our Gmail, that's Tandy Girl, as you see in the corner, Tandy Girl A-I-L at gmail.com because you can always come on if you want to be a, a guest here with us talking on the forums or if you want to come hang with me on the Soul Spotlight then you know if you're an uh, artist or, or some some art form and you want to show and talk about what you do then you, you know, feel free to 
showing this over there as well. But again, thank you all for joining us here on the AIL. I've loved it. Uh, as I love to say in parting, good things come to those who believe. Better things come to those who are patient. But the best things come to those who never give up. I'm Tanya Dixon. It's the living room team right here. They chilled out, chilled out, chilled out. And we'll see you. Whatever credits I'm about to run here, whoever names in there, if you're not with the show no more, then forgive me because I'm about to run your name <laughs> tonight. <laughs> and so, everybody else, I see y'all on the after show in just a few more. We'll talk for just a few moments when we get out. So all of y'all out there, y'all have a beautiful week. We'll see you next time on Art Imitates Live. Mm -hmm. See y'all. <laughs>